the people who who like read the message and then don't respond fuck you bro. <laughs> fuck you <laughs> i hate those people <laughs> <laughs> that's funny uh, no yeah there's yeah you definitely have like those fair share of people that just like they see the message they, yeah. they, they see they, it and then they just oh i'll respond later and yeah. then they just like don't or they just like don't give two shits and yeah, they just don't yeah, respond they don't you know? respond bro I, I don't talk to those people bro. I, don't, I don't talk to those people <laughs> hello everybody and welcome to the someone for podcast Today I got Pavan, Pavan with yep. me. Yeah, Pavan. Dude, that's that's a dope name actually, because thanks, man. It, I believe it means the wind, like wind, right? So um, I think so. Pavan means wind. Yeah. Um. So, so that's it's, if it's like P A V A N, uh-huh. uh, but mine has two A's. Two so A's. It's like Pavan. It's a it's purity. Bavan. Yeah. Okay, purity. Damn. That's, yeah. I never. I didn't realize the difference between that because I know, like whenever. Uh, do, what language do you speak? Gujarati. Gujarati. Yeah, yeah, same. So whenever my parents like s- said that word, I was yeah. like, "There's no difference, really." Yeah. And so it's cool though. No, it's funny. I had like recently a lot of my friends like dep- I could kind of tell what part of like India they're from depending on the way that they say my name. Because, yeah. Because like if it's like if they're like Gujarati, sometimes they'll say like "Oh, Bhavan. but sometimes Bhavan. I Bhavan is like the one that I hear the most. Yeah. Because that's just the most common. That's the most win. common, dude. And then if they're from like the north, they say like Bhavan mm-hmm. with like kind of like yeah. an eye. So was How like, was it like growing up here? Yeah. Like your teachers, like did you have that same oh, experience as me? It. <laughs> yeah, they <dude>. botched it. <laughs> they every botched single it. single class. Like, oh my god. I've heard everything. Pavan, Pavan, <laughs> um, Pavan. Like yeah, no, dude. They, it's crazy, bro. Like I've since I could I went to school. I remember everybody just I had to say it over and over, over. and over again. And they still don't get it. Yeah, they still don't get it, bro. Sh- shy man or shy man. Yeah, sh- shy am or different shit like that. Shy am. And it's, yeah, that's the way I figured that most people would have said like yeah, shy am. And then shy I tell am. them like the I learned over time the why is silent. That's all I say. And people just call me sham, and I pref- I I like that, but the real authentic way is sham 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 yeah like yeah. that's what my parents call me and shit but yeah I, I i prefer like everybody else to call me sham like that's what sham. i hear yeah and, and my friends call me that and it's, it's cool with me like when I don't you really say it, when fuck. you tell people that like the why is silent do you think that they actually get it or it, yeah yeah then, oh, okay. then they're they don't say shy in the beginning shy. like shy it's not like uh shy am like that they, it's yeah. sham, sham like that got it and if i tell them the real real pronunciation that they wouldn't fucking yeah, get it in, in like, a million what? years yeah, <laughs> they wouldn't get it yeah. but oh, that's it's crazy like as having like a unique name yeah it's cool but when when the t- when yeah. you, you're trying to when share you, it to other people and shit yeah. it's like, when you're meeting new people going to like class yeah. and stuff it especially when you're going down like the attendance list right like when they're calling everyone especially the substitute teachers yeah after like six months you get those substitutes they botch that shit like crazy yeah they're going through every name that's like super easy to pronounce and they get yours and before they even say it's like here i'm here (laughs) Uh, yeah dude i've had that happen so many times and then my friends like my brother's name yeah is dave like literally like the the american American way dave and when my friends like found out that my my brother's name was that, they're like, "Your parents just stopped trying." <laughs> Your parents just stopped trying, bro. Because oh, that's funny. Yeah, like they thought I had like such a unique name and shit, and they don't understand that a lot of people in India and yeah. have this name. Like, yeah. it's not a really uncommon name yeah. or anything, but it is uncommon over here. Over here, yeah. 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 And so the first time they heard it, they're like, "Oh shit, this guy is." Is uh has a has a unique has name. It's a unique name, yeah. And they heard my brother's like, God damn. <laughs> <laughs> they, they they fucked him over. <laughs> he's uh, wait, so he's younger brother? Yeah, younger than me. Got it. Okay. It's yeah. D-A-V-E? Yeah. Like D- regular spelling. Cause um my parents were gonna name him the Indian spelling of that, which is D-E-V. D-E-V. Yeah. yeah. And I think one of my dad's friends in from Connecticut, like he went yeah. to Yukon University Got of Connecticut, it. and his friend told him don't don't do that because he went to the through the experience of the school and like them mispronouncing it and shit he's like yeah. nah just keep it simple you're in america now you know <laughs> so that's how he how he kept that name so that's how it all happened that's yeah. funny 
Nice. Wait, what are your parents' names? Bavesh and Nimita. Bavesh yeah. and Nimita. Yeah. Okay. Gotcha. So that that's like also really Indian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I feel like a lot of people probably watch that over yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, of course. That's funny. Yeah. My parents, yeah, so my dad's name is Tushar and my mom's name is Sheetal and mm-hmm. like, yeah, I, they <laughs> watch hers thing. like a lot. Like, <laughs> really? Shidal, Shital, oh yeah, Shidal, yeah. um, like, <laughs> 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 that just doesn't yeah. sound just, right. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh man. Yeah, dude. I I feel like most kids like, I don't even. I feel like it's not even just like kids growing up that are like Indian. I feel like as long as they're, it's just from other countries. Like yeah. their names are just unique. Or it's like when you go when you meet them, mm-hmm. there's like the American way to say it, and then there's like the actual yeah. like authentic way to say I know, it. Even people from uh the middle east and yeah. that that region their names like are 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 unique in their own right too and yeah. like i had uh one of a guest on the podcast and i said his name muhammad and his real name is mahmud which Mahmoud. is yeah like it's spelled uh relatively similar yeah but i i thought it meant this i i thought the pronunciation was the same and I said it on the podcast, like, wait, wait, we got to stop this shit. Like, that's not how you say my name. Uh, and then I was like, okay, sorry about that. And then yeah. we, we started it. Because, uh, like, this, the spelling is kind of similar. Mm-hmm. But it was just the pronunciation of it was different. And I was like, okay, I got to I gotta focus on people's names more. Because that's one of the things I think people, like, everybody, they, they feel connected to their name, name you know yeah. if you say if you mispronounce it and shit like they just feel like fuck this guy doesn't really doesn't care. care yeah 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 so i now i try to make it like try to actually pronounce their names right and yeah. and get to know their name and like so that every time i see them i could pronounce it right say it to them yeah and they feel like okay this guy okay, actually, actually try. connects yeah tries yeah, yeah cuz if you just don't even try and say whatever I don't think that that person will feel right you yeah, know, yeah. talking to you or anything. So. Yeah, no, I get that. Um, it's funny, like, even when I used to see, like, uh, when I was, like, watching basketball and stuff, I used to see, like, Anteta Kumpo. And I was oh, like, yeah. wait, what the? Like, that's a tongue <laughs> twister. And so I was like, Giannis Anteta Kumpo? Or, mm-hmm. Ante- like, I'd hear, like, the analysts saying yeah. it differently. And I'm like, how do you say they have his to- name? Like, it, it's mm-hmm. long, but I just... It yeah. took me a while. Antetokounmpo. Antetokounmpo, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like two T's, so you got to say the right T at the, the same yeah. right time. Yeah. Because, like, I've heard, like, when I'm watching, like, Shaq, Ernie, mm-hmm. like, they all just bought, <laughs> yeah, like, they they, they've, they've, they've said it a couple of different ways. Yeah, that, Chuck, too. Chuck doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> like, he just, he just says whatever. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. It's like Giannis. Giannis. It's like, <laughs> yeah. Giannis. <laughs> yeah. And I'm sure, like, I think I've even heard, like, when he said his own name, like, obviously he has, like, accent and stuff, and mm-hmm. so, like, it sounds proper. Yeah. But I feel like there's, you can still at least get close to it. Like, Giannis is probably not exactly there, mm-hmm. but it's kind of close. Yeah, it's kind of close. It's Giannis as close as, as like, you yeah. could say with the accent, like, yeah. not being from Greece. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm exactly. Yeah. Man. Yeah, it's it's weird how accents work, though, like, the the English accent to me, like you could say anything in an English accent, I'll believe you. Like, yeah. That's how powerful that yeah, accent is. is bro. <laughs> like every time I hear an English accent, you could you could be selling toilet paper. I'll fucking buy the toilet paper. <laughs> like, you just have an English accent. Like there, it, it, there's something about it. Yeah. That it makes it like proper and kind. Like yeah. some for some reason, you just feel kind when you or, or you feel that kindness coming through whenever yeah. you hear it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like if you go, uh, even Southern accents, like, uh, from, you know, uh, fuck, what is it? North Carolina, Alabama, Alabama that area, Georgia, yeah. Georgia, like you talk to those people and they just give out, give off a vibe of like generosity yeah. and, and just like appreciation and they care for you. Yeah. And it, like, it's, it's weird how, it, how it all happened. Like, I don't even know, like the, just those people, group together ha- have some kind of different dialect yeah that then they just passed on to everybody else and yeah. you have to be around them to pick it up like yeah you know yeah it's like we're different parts of the like just even within the u.s right like mm-hmm. 
there's different dialects within the U.S. of just English. Like, yeah. Obviously, you got in the South, like, the, they have the southern, a different, yeah. yeah, they have, like, a Southern dialect. Um, but then, like, I, it's funny, I was, like, looking at it, like, with a couple of my friends, and, like, we mentioned, like, New Orleans, right? Mm-hmm. In Louisiana. Yeah. And they're, like, yeah, you can tell when you're a tourist versus, like, a native, because natives don't say it, like, New mm. Orleans, right? Oh, okay. I guess. Yeah. New Orleans. Know, or New Orleans. Like, it kind of, like, blends. Like, yeah, New Orleans. Yeah, blends it. Um, I've heard that. Yeah. And then, like, even just, like, even I've heard in, like, Boston, they have, like, a different, like, yeah. you can <laughs> yeah, tell. Yeah, Boston. Like, I don't even know what Boston, Boston English is, is like. Boston is a family guy. If you watch Family Guy. It's you like know, that. That's, yeah. that's it. Either. <laughs> but that's like accentuated to the point where it's like, you know, exaggerated. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. I feel yeah, like California English is normal. Yeah, it's normal, bro. <laughs> like when I whenever I hear Californians speak and I hear everybody else, I think, OK, that's that's uh, something different. different. But whenever I hear like this, this seems normal, normal. But I don't know. I don't know. Nobody's ever pointed out to me that. I sound different. Yeah, you know what I'm you've saying? got like I don't know a Western dialect. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't sound like Californian. Californian, you know, yeah, yeah. it's just it just sounds normal. normal. You know, yeah, you might say a few words like, uh, what do people say over here? A lot of people say like, uh, like this, like oh like yeah, it. so yeah. that's something big. Oh. Hella, like yeah. shit like that. It's so you might have a few words. There's like, yeah, the, the, like certain slang words that just yeah. kind of, it's just like rolls off the tongue. Yeah, just a different type of, of yeah, different words people say yeah, just dude. to accentuate themselves. It's like, cool, I wanted to, it's like this, this whole year, right? We've been like mm-hmm. virtual and stuff through like the pandemic, but like yeah. I really wanted to go to um, like a study abroad because I feel like I've seen like parts of the U.S., yeah. but I feel like it'd be cool to go see different parts, like other countries, right? Kind of yeah. get involved, like <laughs> kind of see like what the culture is like, see their language and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I was looking at like just like different parts of like looking at South Africa, like Cape Town, South America, yeah. different parts of Asia, Europe, and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And I was like, oh, dude, like this sounds sick. Like you know, you, yeah. it's it's a different culture, but like at least if you're staying there for a couple of like a couple of months, you kind of get. You, you, you kind of pick up on certain things yeah. over there, right? That you wouldn't normally even come across over here. Exactly, right? right? Um, I don't know. that th- Those are a couple of things I was considering, but then obviously with, like, everything COVID, shut down, yeah. yeah. It yeah. just, like, kind of didn't happen. But I feel like there's a lot of people that are in, like, similar boats. So, like, you're kind of just stuck in, like, mm-hmm. that bubble that you're in right now. Yeah, with, I know. Like, the traveling is, is something special, especially if, if you have the means to do it. I, I really want everybody to do it because it's just a you can't live life especially right now in the 21st century yeah not knowing that and of course the internet helps like you could see yeah the internet through the internet through youtube through social media yeah how other people live from halfway across the world Mm -hmm. but just being there like i've i've been to india three four times and i've been to a lot of countries i'm grateful for that yeah um but every time you go there the first thing you're met with is the culture and the people. Exactly. And there's no way of expressing that yeah. through video. Like uh, you could see it, but to live it is something different. You live know it, saying? taste it. You know, yeah. when you go to yeah. those countries, you got to eat their food. <laughs> yeah, you got to eat the food. <laughs> Even though it's like pollution is like <laughs> way over 300 AQI or yeah. some shit. It's, yeah. That and then like the that's food. part like, of the experience. Yeah, like the know? street food's like literally drenched in oil, but you know. Yeah, yeah. That's a taste. Like you might have diarrhea the next day. <laughs> but <laughs> fuck it. Bro. You just take some of those like pills with you when yeah, you dude, go. Like those the pills medicines. don't even work, bro. Like look, the last time I went, uh, twenty eighteen, uh, we went to this one restaurant and they they had, I believe, some uncooked chicken. It didn't taste uh, like that while eating it, but it was probably the chicken, right? So. We had the chicken. Next night, I, I slept perfectly. Yeah. And I get waking up like by the urge of like <laughs> I just need to take a shit. And I and I went to the toilet, took one shit, went back to sleep. It happened again. <laughs> Wait, in bed? No, 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 oh, not in bed. Okay. So I had to <laughs> in bed. I was like, <laughs> that would've been rough. That was, I have some control at that point. Uh, I was like, "Damn, did yeah. you shrink yourself?" <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> uh, that would've been that would've been bad. But I, it happened. So I went again, and and then this time I I just had to like stay there for like. 
30 minutes. Like, I just sat on the toilet for 30 minutes. Oh, God. And it was bad. And then I called my mom, and she gave me some pills. Like, <laughs> and, th- and those pills didn't work at all. Like, yeah, it just kept it, fucking yeah. happening. Like, <laughs> just water and shit, water and shit. Like, that's it. <laughs> that's the whole thing. <laughs> and, then, and then my... Uh, my aunt, she, yeah. she was there as well, and she got this Indian, like, Indian prescription for diarrhea. Like, that shit will clog your system. Like, it will Ew. block everything from coming out. You won't shit for, like, two days after that Oh, shit. is it the modium pills? I forget what it's called, but it's something strong, bro. And she gave me that. Did it work? Yeah, and then it worked, and I was good after that. But then it was too late, though, because... I like dehydrated my whole body. body yeah. yeah. And so, and, and after that day, actually the day we woke up, we had to drive like four hours or something. Oh God. And so I was dehydrated as fuck. And on the drive, I like got a fever like oh, a, man. and I was, I was and, done. And, and the heat there probably doesn't even help. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't work. And so all I had to do was just like drink a bunch of water and go to sleep for like few hours and then i got back to normal oh, but dang. it was it was bad it was a bumpy ride it was a bad <laughs> experience but i would i would rather go there and like experience all the fun shit especially yeah. because my f- whole family was there at that point it was yeah. like my cousin's wedding yeah and so it was an experience to just have fun but then there are those consequences the, yeah. <laughs> that you, come with it yeah that, <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's bad yeah no it's like I want to go back because I haven't been in such a long time. Last time I went was 2006. Mm, um, okay, so you were small I too. I was tiny yeah. and like it was – at that time, I didn't really go out and travel because I was super young. Yeah, yeah. And like um, when we went, I was just mostly at like my grandparents' house. Mm-hmm. And so like I didn't eat like a lot of like that street food that, you know, that, yeah. that screws up your stomach <laughs> yeah, and yeah. like, you know um, – I wish I did because, like, even though I would have probably gone sick, yeah. that's the, I, that's that's one thing it. that I didn't do because my parents were like, "I don't want you to get sick," yeah. even though it happened. But it was because we went to a restaurant, uh, and yeah, yeah, and I didn't really expect it to happen. But usually, we just ate uh, whatever my uh, relatives they made, they like made. they they that they live there and they know the produce, they know the people, yeah. they know it's it's fresh, relatively, like yeah. so, they, and they clean it well. Yeah, so exactly. if you if you're eating that and it's like actually healthy and they didn't like put too much oil or they didn't use some random shit. I don't know. Yeah. Like the, the water there, they had to boil the water. Boil the water. That's what, yeah. It's just shit. Like when I, the first time I brushed my teeth, <laughs> like, you know how you, you put water on the toothbrush yeah. and shit. So I put the toothpaste on, on the toothbrush, put some water. First thing I tasted, it was like acid. Like that's how oh, that's how the water was ew. like. Oh it god! Was, it was something like like you, like <clears throat> lemony, like acid, but it's not even lemon. It's not fresh. It's just like, like something corroding in, in the, the water. water. Yeah, ew. I was like, fuck it. I might I might as well. <laughs> might as well. <laughs> could, that's all they have. No, I was like, got a brush. You yeah, got to do what you got to do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, I probably man. lost like a year of my life, but that's like, <laughs> fuck it. You know, <laughs> Your teeth are gonna corrode early. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because my sister, she went recently, and, like, when she went, they got, like, they, they obviously had to, like, boil the water and stuff, mm-hmm. but she was, like, telling us about it, so we just went on Amazon, and, like, you can change your settings to Amazon India. Oh, really? Yeah, and, like, obviously all the dollars changed to rupees, uh-huh. and so, like, all that stuff is hella cheap, really? and so, yeah, <laughs> we just got, like, we just got a couple cases of water delivered to their house mm-hmm. and so then they just had like bottled water yeah she's yeah. like yeah whenever we went out like we just drink yeah that instead it's good of that the, yeah. that's becoming more uh prevalent in other countries like amazon and this online yeah. shopping world because i mean you go in some some towns and shit in india there's no address bro. There's you no, live like in some hut right here yeah. that you just built yourself how are they gonna get you the package if they don't know where you live you know yeah literally like my grandpa's address like it doesn't even have like a it's it's not even like a proper address like you have here it yeah. literally like part of the address is behind the behind the civil court <laughs> behind the like civil court. Yeah, no, oh, the like, cities I'm, over there, they're not <laughs> planned, like, the infrastructure <laughs> shit, like, they didn't take it upon them, they, or they did take it upon themselves to build everything, like, yeah. the people of the town, they took it upon themselves, and they didn't check with the government, this was yeah. after 
I mean, after they did that, yeah, and and now they're working to build towards a better infrastructure. Yeah. But before, you know, they just did whatever. You know, yeah. you wanted to put put in like a you wanted to make another room for your house, just fucking build it, like, build right it. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's funny because like whenever like he tells us like oh like what's the address there, right? They're like oh it's like right behind the civil court, and so we're like. <laughs> But do you have like an address so that we can actually like yeah. you know navigate to it if we're ever there? Uh, and like when he says it to like his friends, like they all just know where it is. Yeah. Like anyone that's from there just knows. Like knows. okay, it's yeah. like that's they where live, it's at. Yeah, especially if you live there, they just know. They just it's, it's in those small towns, everybody just knows each other. Exactly. Like if you, and especially if you live there for a long period of time, you're they just, just part know. of the community, and that's the benefit of that small town living. Yeah. Is, yeah. You, you know to, everyone. Yeah, you just know everybody. And like you don't have to like whenever you're around town or something, you can always find a friend or something, have lunch or whatever. Exactly. And go somewhere. There's no hesitation in yeah. that matter. It just feels like a tight knit community and like you can just holler at anyone yeah. whenever they're just walking by. You're at yeah, the that's grocery something store. That yeah. I admit, or I want to experience. I mean, because we oh, we live over here in which it's not like LA where it's like a huge city, but yeah. it's still a city. Like this is, there's like 3 million people that live here yeah. in Orange County. So you don't get that feeling, but it's, you have to build it like through elementary school and shit. I had that feeling with my friends because I went to this, like the same elementary school, middle school, high school in the same, um, what is it called? School, school district. district. Yeah. So all my friends like went up with me. Like I, I know yeah. people since kindergarten that i still know to that to this day because we just went through school together like we've known each other yeah pretty much our whole lives so it's crazy I, yeah i had that it's funny my first year of college i walk in and i was like okay it's college it's like mm -hmm. a fresh start right yeah there's a homie that i went to like elementary school with we were we had kindergarten together we went mm -hmm. to middle school with we went to high school together mm -hmm. First class of college, I walk in, He's first there. person I see. And I'm like, I Damn. guess four schools in a row. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's like crazy. But for me, my like, my elementary school, middle school, and high school are very close to Cal State Fullerton. Mm -hmm. So it's like, oh, okay. there's still a decent amount of people that go from yeah, my yeah. high school to Cal State Fullerton. Mm -hmm. But like, how about you? Was it kind of similar for you? I mean, I have a few friends that went there, but a, yeah, it was, it was a, a group of my friends went there that I knew relatively like mm -hmm. i knew i talked to them but my main like group my main like every day like i talked to yeah they went to other schools and yeah, stuff same. but okay yeah we, we we still talk and shit like it's it's <clears throat> whenever they're here on break or something then we you guys connect. Like kick yeah it and stuff yeah. like that yeah yeah but it's it's different when your whole life you've been around these people and now that's it's it's separate you know yeah, yeah. and i couldn't imagine having that like before the internet you know like if your no, friends went like out of state you can't talk to them or like if yeah you, before the phone even you gotta like, see if they have a landline or yeah, something you gotta, find, you gotta <laughs> get a landline you gotta have, find some way of communication the pay phones like put in 25 cents yeah like, dude <laughs> i don't know how people did that but it was it was just life back yeah. like that like they didn't know anything better because that's what what it was you yeah know? now you got like you can't you go can back just, now yeah now you can just it's so easy just start a group facetime like yeah one person could be in like la another one in san diego another one in seattle another mm -hmm. new york like just yeah, start that's the group the benefit facetime of and like uh, everyone's free you can just get on a call and like mm -hmm. you can still just like yeah. hang out that way yeah i hate I, I mean i don't hate it but like when people all they do is text like that's when i'm like bro you gotta you gotta call me every now and then yeah. i call pretty much every friend of mine like i because yeah. i want to hear your voice and i want to have a conversation that, rather yeah, than yeah. just like okay you you say something and then i reply and we could go through this the same thing w while just, just talking on, like yeah. a call <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, i'm the talk. same exact way like if so if a conversation's going on too long over like text mm -hmm. i prefer to just do that yeah. over a call or facetime facetime because like then you can just see the mm -hmm. person but then like obviously if they can't then like a yeah, call, call, I feel like, is just, like, the second best option. Mm -hmm. Like, you can just finish. Conversation that would have taken you 30 minutes over text, you could have finished in five minutes over FaceTime. But, like, <laughs> you can just still talk after that. Yeah, it's better, bro. Like, especially, 
being able to hear them and the intonations in their voice and yeah. whatever like if you're talking about something funny you could type a, a emoji like lol yeah you're not but really laughing like you're not yeah, really you're like not fucking laughing, laughing really. like you can just say lol to <laughs> yeah. anything but like you know when you're talking in person if that's funny yeah you're, you're gonna laughing, laugh yeah yeah, yeah. No, i feel that and then like even now even just like snapchat instagram and stuff like when you're just like Snapchatting, Snapchat's like cool. You can still at least see their face, but like, mm-hmm. I still prefer a FaceTime yeah. or like call. Yeah. That and because like even Instagram, I feel like the DMs is just similar to like. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we talked about that last night. You know how how you said it just consumes so much of your time. Time, you yeah. Know? Just be, when you're on there and you see the pictures and you see the videos and shit, and yeah. next thing you know, you're scrolling. Yeah. And they they got you they got yeah. you yeah <laughs> like they have that for you page and like i'm literally just scrolling through my for you page yeah. all the time like oh my like, god oh wait what's this oh wait what's this yeah like, literally used to they do figured that. out the formula bro yeah. like whoever found that that like or tried it and they realized this algorithm like it'll work yeah jesus christ they they they, they got they nailed they, it they nailed yeah. it they nailed it whoever it was but i mean whoever you are if you're listening to this ever <laughs> You figured it out, bro. You figured it out. <laughs> you got me. Yeah. <laughs> Even like Twitter does it. Twitter's got the for like they have like the trending, but then they also have like the for you page. So oh, it's really? like all the stuff that like kind of looking at, like all the tweets and stuff that you look at based off the people that you follow. Mm. It pretty much tailors like the trending stuff, but for you. Oh, okay. So wow. like it'll just have like a mix of like whatever you like. Like if you're into like if you're following a certain sports people, or just yeah. movies and stuff like that, like or just like certain like actors or like politics or whatever, mm-hmm. right? It'll just, it'll yeah, have specific it stuff like that. Just, and so a lot of people I feel like just like look at that because it's like tailored to what you're interested yeah. in and just makes it so easy. Yeah. And that's what they do is just provide more of what you like. Yeah. That's what, that's their main mission is keep you on it for as long as possible. And what yeah. will do that, give you more of what you like. Yeah. And that, that cycle just continues for as long as you want you yeah know? like last night when we we're talking about it that on instagram i think before like over summer when literally didn't have like much going on right like mm-hmm. anytime you, i got like a break like i'd get on like even like early mornings or like just at night like yeah. just get on instagram and then like i'd be spending a, maybe an hour maybe if not more on it mm-hmm. per day yeah and, and then you know Apple sends you that screen time like uh-huh. notification. I'm like, it's up oh, like 200. percent I'm up like yeah, like oh snap, I'm up 25 percent this yeah. week, and I'm up another 25. percent I'm up another 25. It's like, uh, oh snap. Yeah. But then like that's when I started putting like a limit. Like okay, they have those. Um, yeah, on Instagram it has like mm-hmm. that. You can put like so I just put like a time after limit. 15 minutes, send me a notification. So it's like all right, let me just wrap up whatever post I'm on mm-hmm. and I'll put it away. Yeah. And like after that. I got that same notification. <laughs> oh, your screen time was down twenty five percent. Your screen yeah. time was down twenty. I was like, okay, I could. I, could I think it's because the the reason for that is because humans in general aren't used to this, like having that dopamine kick right away, like instant yeah. gratification of seeing a, a cool video, a funny video, yeah, right on your command, like. And so as soon as you you get that experience, you just want that to continue to happen. You want to yeah. see good content all the time, yeah, all the time. It has to be short. It has to be funny. It has to be this. Yeah. And that's what it's going to give you because yeah. people are making it. And if people are making it, people are going to see it, you know? Yeah. Because, like, I feel like right now, especially, like, once, like, the school year started, you're just, like, super busy. You don't have time for to, you know, just if you want to watch something funny. Sometimes you just don't have time yeah. to go watch, like, a two-hour movie. Like, mm-hmm. you do have time for, like, a two-minute video. Yeah. And if it's just, like, <laughs> if, even if it's, like, a 20-second video, that's even better, right? Mm-hmm. You're squeezing a couple of those. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But, like, when you just But then get that 20-second compounds to, you know, 30 minutes yeah. to an hour, hour to two Sometimes hours. two hours. You know? <laughs> <laughs> but and then it's two hours. Like, I could have done something. just watched it, yeah. Know? But, no, I feel you. So, like... I feel like I do that a lot. I mm-hmm. think on Instagram though, it's just like, it's like a comp. It's like, it it's all of like the stuff that you like just compiled into one place. Like, yeah, if you you can get that funny video. You can get like your news. You can also get like sports mm-hmm. updates and all that stuff yeah. just together. And then your the DMs like where your friends send you stuff and yeah. you're connected to that as well. It's it's wild. Yeah, I, you just constantly like all your homies like you just send them like oh <laughs> yeah. do this funny thing <laughs> yeah. like you just send them like just random stupid videos yeah. but they're just funny right. I know. You just send that. But it and then takes like, up time, though. It That's does. the thing, like to check all that and then reply to it, and then they send, and then you had you send them stuff, and then 
they the reply, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I, I'm I'm more like you, where I, I prefer the iMessage, and I I I like how iMessage is simple, and the fact like you text, and, and that's just all it is. Like I don't, they have the gifs and all that stuff yeah. on there, but I don't really use that. Yeah, I just, if I need to say something quick, then I'll I'll text you. If I want to talk to you, I'll call you, and yeah. that's how I prefer it rather yeah. than like going through social media. Uh, DMing and all yeah, because I know yeah. that if I get on like that social media, if you DM me like, "Hey, dude, you free?" Like, yeah, if I get on, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna get caught up into all that caught stuff. I'd it. rather just you know respond on iMessage, <laughs> yeah. or if not, just like call. Even if you're busy, just like respond like, "Oh, dude, like mm-hmm. yeah, I'm busy right now, but what's up?" Yeah, and then just call back whenever you're free or something, right? Mm-hmm. The people who who like read the message and then don't respond. Fuck you, bro. Fuck you. <laughs> I hate those people. Uh, that's funny. Uh, no, yeah, there's, yeah, you definitely have like those fair share of people that just like they see the message, yeah. they, they see they, it, and then they just, oh, I'll respond later, and yeah. then they just like don't, or they just like don't give two shits and yeah, they just yeah, don't respond. Don't you know? respond, bro. I, I don't talk to those people, bro. I don't, I don't talk to those people. Because I'm, I'm, I'm like good with responding responding you know, right I, whatever yeah. even if i don't have time to respond to your full thing i was like i'm gonna get back to you in a minute you know yeah like i'll i'll say something so i don't leave you hanging yeah uh of okay there i did that you feel like i just ended the conversation or right there you know yeah so instead you, you say a little something so that they know okay i'm gonna i'm gonna do it later yeah and then you could go back to the conversation but if you just ghost them like that you know, it's like they send you yeah. a long paragraph and you just read it. And you're like, I'll respond later, and then you just forget. And yeah. it's like, ah, uh, fuck, fuck. Yeah. yeah, but yeah, no. That I mean, I feel like I do that too sometimes. Like sometimes, if you don't mm-hmm. have enough time to go through like the whole conversation, you just respond like, oh, hey, dude, like, what's up? Like, we'll we'll talk in a bit. Like, mm-hmm. just give me like five minutes. Let me finish yeah. up what I'm doing, and I'll call you. Yeah, uh, it's, it's it's a better way of communicating than than just texting Leave, yeah, yeah then just or just leaving them on yeah, red, leaving them red. Dude. <laughs> that means i mean i don't know what it means but that probably just means they don't have the time or they just don't care you know yeah it's either yeah. or but it's hard to distinguish what yeah. it is like is it they don't have time because it's like you send them a text <laughs> and then you send them a snapchat they open the Snapchat, but they don't respond <laughs> yeah. to the text. It's like that's happened to me. <laughs> <laughs> they respond to the Snapchat, but uh, they don't respond to the text. Like, yeah, okay, so you got but time for the Snapchat, but not at the for same the text. time, I'm like, I'm not petty about it to the fact where, like, I'm gonna do that to you. Yeah, and I'll never do that to anybody. Yeah. like, cause I, why do that to somebody just cause they did it to did you? it to me? I yeah, like I'll never do that, because I communication to me is like really the, important yeah. especially with friends especially with i mean like with everybody yeah and being especially this podcast especially has taught me how important communication, communication is. is yeah whenever i talk to people just being able to express my thoughts fully yeah. and you being able to comprehend it yeah and and being able to visualize it for yourself yeah and, you know these we all have ideas and you know um this the English language and every language is meant to experience or meant to express your thoughts of what you have to others, right? Yeah. And through language, we're able to tell other people our ideas. And yeah. the more you know about, or the more you increase your vocabulary, and the more you're you're able to just the cadence of your voice, yeah. Have, being able to pause in sentences. All these different aspects of communication, I had no idea about. Like, I was just talking yeah. to friends, just having fun, you know. But whenever I listen to it and I listen to other people's podcasts, they have that flow, that rhythm in their voice. And I was like, okay, I got to develop this. Yeah. Because I want to talk like that. And and so that more people will understand me, you know. I, yeah. I, there are people listening. I want you to understand this message that I want to get across. Yeah. And that's the only way is to better those skills you know read books watch youtube videos there's so much to learn about it yeah like i've had uh or i've had a communications professor on and he's talked about how or in college i took a class actually on communication or public speaking i guess and in that class i mean of course there's like theories and other shit like that i didn't give a fuck about all that yeah. <laughs> i was like just teach me how can i communicate better better and i had that professor on the podcast and he told me a few like 
just different things of like I mentioned the cadence of your voice, yeah. how you how you express yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, if you keep saying uh and like and uh that like that, you yeah. know, messing up, it won't come across as authentic and that you put your mind to it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? It's you have to practice that. And it, it just comes with practice actually. Yeah. It, the more you focus on improving these little tweaks that you have in your voice and something that you want to improve on to get it a clear message across yeah. it's different things like that yeah yeah one of my friends is I was, I was having a conversation similar with one of my friends and when we were talking he was like yeah you say like a lot mm-hmm. and i was like what? right yeah <laughs> it just it, when i'm talking and subconsciously yeah. like i started counting oh that's one mm-hmm. all right that's two. Yeah, oh, yeah. that's three and he started pointing it out first mm-hmm. and when he pointed it out i was i was like okay wow i yeah. do say it a lot yeah it's it's not bad to to if it's bad if you just don't recognize that at all at all and you go with it and people are, are like are, are see i just said it again yeah but are saying are pointing it out to you like this is fucking terrible you know what i'm saying yeah it i can't listen to you but it's it's so sometimes it's so part of you that you just have to say it sometimes yeah it's hard to get it out completely you know yeah. what i'm saying yeah no i get that it, i think i took that same class the public speaking mm-hmm. one and there, there's like those buffer words that the professor was talking about and it's pretty similar for most people it's um like it, whenever you can't think of like what's the next word mm-hmm. to say those are the words that you fill in yeah. so that the sentence kind of flows yeah and i've learned to take pauses instead yeah yeah i'm, I'm not afraid anymore to just let it be let, yeah just pause yeah pause it's it's not going to kill the conversation if you just pause for a second think about what you're saying and then yeah. move on yeah you know and I think that also ju- that also did translate to one thing. So I took that class my first. Uh, did you take it freshman year? I believe so. Yeah. Freshman. Yeah, I think so. Freshman year. Freshman year, and so we're both the same year, and so our mm-hmm. second semester of freshman year is when we went virtual. Mm-hmm. And that year off, especially when you're not talking to anyone, you're not. It's hard to meet people because you're on Zoom yeah. for all your classes. <laughs> you're not involved anywhere on campus, and in most classes, everyone's cameras are off. Yeah. <laughs> their audio is off. You just see their names, right? Mm-hmm. And I think that also did help me develop, like, the confidence. Like, you know, how else are you going to meet people? You just got to hit them up. Yeah. Um, you got to talk to them and I think that, I'm pretty sure out. that's how we met, right? Yeah, yeah. Like, we had a class together. Um, I think it was a law class. Yeah, business, business law. Business law. Uh, management 246. Yeah. Like that literally. class sucked ass. <laughs> 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 I wouldn't take that in a million years. Yeah. Even if you paid me, I wouldn't take that. <laughs> Just like in that class, that's how we met, right? Like yeah. We hit each other up on like the Zoom like text. Yeah. And that's literally how we met. We started talking. That's how I met a lot of people last year. Mm-hmm. And I mean, obviously, there's still a fair share of people that you hit up like, oh, dude, like, what's up? How's it going? Like, you know. Mm-hmm. You still, they, sometimes they, maybe they might be sleeping. I don't know. Their cameras, <laughs> yeah. but like, so they don't respond. But you still, there were still a fair share of people, a decent amount of people that I did meet that mm-hmm. way, because and, it wasn't available to meet in person, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, You're left with no other option. It's yeah. either you be antisocial and don't talk to anyone, <laughs> or you know, you just hit up with some people that you think you might vibe with, and then yeah, you just, yeah. It's you have to reach out, especially during that time. Yeah. I remember some teachers actually wanted. Uh, the cameras on for all the students and everything, yeah. and that helped uh, more people communicate and, and get to know each other. But to me, the the breakout rooms—that's the worst part about the it. Breakout the room. breakout rooms. The breakout rooms. A lot of times, I mean, I'm the first one to talk. Pretty much 99% of the time, I'm I'm I unmute myself and say something, and then somebody else talks. Yeah. And then there's always that one kid that doesn't talk doesn't the whole talk. time. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because. <laughs> I don't know what, what goes on, but whatever. Everyone is just like three of you in like the breakout room. It's literally just w- you and one other person yeah. talking. The other <laughs> yeah. person, God knows what they're up to. I know. I know. <laughs> but all that sh- all that stuff happened. or I didn't even know about Zoom until the pandemic. Yeah, like, same. All that. It just happened so organically. Everybody just sh- adapted yeah. to this new way of, of communicating 
through Zoom, through uh, like FaceTime calling and, and trying to communicate that way because it wasn't possible to see each other in person. Yeah. And I'm grateful now, like especially where we're at um, in this country and uh, this state we live in. Yeah. That it's gotten better yeah, a long time. Like the, the pandemic has, I, I don't, I don't want to say it's ended I mean, people yeah. are still getting it. The people are dying from it, which is, you know, sad and yeah. unfortunate. But at the same time, we've come a long ways from where when, we when, started. Yeah, yeah, when it was really tough out there. Yeah, it's it's cool now. Even when we're back on campus, you there's a lot of like things you can do. Obviously, they weren't the same as like our freshman year when mm-hmm. like pre-pandemic when there was like everything yeah. was fully open. But even now, like. We can still go to the rec center. We can still play ball. We mm-hmm. can still go meet up with people, whatever, right? Yeah. Granted, it's with masks, but, like, you're still able to go out yeah, there. Yeah, you're still, still able to do that. You're and, still able and to I, do I it. I took that for granted, and yeah. we all did. We all did t- take that for granted when it was yeah. taken from us, and we weren't able to do that. Yeah. You know, just I, I've i made it uh, kind of a ritual to go play basketball every time i'm on campus i'm on campus tuesday and thursday yeah and every every morning i'm playing two hours basketball with just whoever's there nice. you know shoot uh, sometimes i shoot around sometimes they're pickup games yeah but every tuesday and thursday you'll find me at the gym, at the gym <laughs> yeah playing ball yeah yeah because it's just that's how you meet people at the same time but at the same time you get a good workout in and you're able to i mean i love playing basketball yeah so same. it's it's not like I have to do it. Like some people hate working out and they, they have to persuade themselves every time to go, you know, for me, it's never a question. Like I love working out. I love playing basketball. So, um, it's just a habit for me. It's become part of me that if I don't do it, I feel bad. You feel, yeah, yeah. You feel weird. Yeah. I feel weird. And, and that happened during the pandemic when the gyms closed, I was I, I turned into somebody that I didn't know. Yeah. Like, it was just like, I felt my whole body just turn into like slush. Yeah. You know, it wasn't tight. Like it, when I lift weights and stuff and just going there is, is, is part of it, you know, just yeah. going to the gym and lifting weights, you, you get exercise that if you do it often enough yeah. and you, and you just stop doing it, your body has to adapt and it's not a good adaptation when you when if you haven't worked out and you start going it feels good to work out you know yeah you feel better but that really hurt me (laughs) like yeah at the start of the pandemic i was like god damn i gotta do push-ups every day now yeah (laughs) you know that and then we had our even our local parks we couldn't go play ball at like the gyms and stuff yeah so Growing up, like my brother and my cousins, we'd all go play basketball at like a park close by, right? Mm. And then they took out like the rims. Oh and shit! So we're like, whoever did, whoever <laughs> found that out, like, god damn. Yeah, they took out the rims, and some of them they put like these like metal like locks on really? the like on the thing. So like, if you shoot, it won't. The ball just gets stuck up there. God damn. So you can't like, it's not even like you can just unlock the thing and like the ball will Let just come, come down. Yeah, like, it's locked. They had they have like keys that you have to do to unlock it i know um so it's just annoying like you <laughs> the can't... precautions they took bro yeah because they... i mean you look at now and it, and everybody's it's back to normal, back to normal you know, and, yeah yeah at our park they know. put up the rims again yeah. <laughs> 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 they unlock those things and then you think did it really even like was it even a problem in the first place yeah probably not the um i mean i got like the reason why because like if you're yeah. playing pick a ball like there's a lot of people there, yeah and stuff. you're just getting up like you're getting close to each other and like Uh chances are plus the knowledge wasn't there there. completely yeah exactly what this was and stuff yeah Yeah, it's just i mean it was just unfortunate like obviously it'd be cool to just like even if we couldn't play pickup ball just to go shoot around in like smaller groups and stuff just Mm -hmm. like because sometimes i just go with like my brother or both of us just go shoot around but like we couldn't even do that (laughs) yeah okay me and you are are both uh laker fans right and so i mean as soon as I could watch TV. I think like I was watching Laker games. Laker bro. games. I I was hooked on Kobe and the Lakers and all that. Yeah. The whole environment, like me, my cousins and family, friends, we we're all just hooked on the basketball, and and that's how I 
how I connected with a lot of my friends is because of that relationship of with basketball. I'd always be on the basketball court. It's such yeah. a, a a cool environment. Every time I you see people playing pickup games or something, you could automatically connect on just basketball. Yeah, and you make friends with them. It's yeah, a, it's crazy exactly. how it works. Yeah, I remember it. For me, a similar thing. Like growing up, just like what. Laker games, if we're watching something, obviously, mm-hmm. like, we'd be watching. But then if the Laker game's starting, switch it over to the yeah. Laker game, yeah. right? <laughs> and especially, like, my parents, like, my dad, he loved watching Kobe fourth quarter. Mm-hmm. Like, that each, was, like That was so fun. He, like, he'll keep it easy during the first quarter <laughs> and stuff. But whether they're up or down, like, usually they'll they'll keep it pretty consistent mm-hmm. throughout the game. And then fourth quarter, fourth Kobe, quarter. Phil Jackson, like... <laughs> They just whatever happened, yeah. bro. Their fourth he just quarter went into magic. some zone, yeah, in his mind, and then they just annihilate everyone. Like, yeah. it, it, that was just their mentality. Mm-hmm. And like, it, it so sometimes like my dad, like he'd be like, okay, yeah, we can watch something, and then we'll switch it over at halftime. Yeah. And so like obviously if we didn't have anything, we just watched the whole game. But mm-hmm. if anything, we'd at least just watch the second half of the game when we know that like yeah. scores are gonna be kind of close, or the Lakers might be like down a little, or they might be up a little. Mm-hmm. But by fourth quarter. They're it's, just gonna. Yeah. We'll watch that one. He's gonna <laughs> attack. Um, it was so fun when when they went on that playoff run and that 08 to 10. 08 10. Yeah. yeah. That that was such a fun time to watch Lakers basketball because you just went in knowing that this was gonna be a, like a Kobe. Kobe was gonna become the Black Mamba. You know, yeah. he's just gonna go off. Yeah. Every single time, especially during the playoffs. Yeah. He was in another zone, like. There's this famous interview, uh, and you've probably seen it a lot of times, but he was asked, like, uh, aren't you happy? Like, you won game whatever, yeah. game three, game four. He's like, job's not finished. Job's not finished, yeah. Job's not finished. And he was just so zoned in on winning. Yeah. I mean, it, they make comparisons with Michael Jordan, and I don't like to compare yeah. players or anything, but I w- I'll just say this about Michael Jordan is he was that way to where he had that – yeah. Or he he is still that 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 way. He's always been competitive and he's always wanted to win over everything. Yeah. He hates losing. He yeah. hates losing. He says it in his documentary, have you you seen yeah, the yeah. last dance? Yeah. Like, I've watched it twice. Like yeah. every episode I just watched it twice. I watched it when it first came out and then it's on Netflix. Yeah. Um it, yeah, it's been on Netflix for a few months and I watched it again. Yeah. Classic documentary. Yeah. I loved it. That was one of my favorite documentaries. Yeah. I watched it, yeah, when it came out on ESPN mm-hmm. Plus, I think, and then Netflix. And then, like, sometimes, like, even if I'm just, like, at the gym or something and I'm just, like, once I, like, lift and stuff and I go and I'm just doing, like, some cardio, mm-hmm. I just have it sitting there just watching it while I'm just doing some <laughs> random stuff, right? Yeah. Um, but, yeah, he even says it in, um, like, I think it was one of the scenes, like, he was like, oh, it's because you never won anything, right? Like, <laughs> he's very straightforward yeah. and blunt about it because like, he knows he's competitive. But I know. But he can back it up. Yeah, he always backed it up. You know, there was always something about him. Uh, whenever you look at, I mean, the documentary it exaggerated it. You know, it focused on his life. but I And I wasn't part of that era. Yeah. But I talked to my dad and, and he, he talks about his in that era yeah everybody knew michael jordan, michael jordan and you know you knew he was greatness like yeah. you knew you respected him because he performed at a high level for that many years regardless you know? of whether you're yeah, in chicago or not yeah regardless everybody knew michael jordan and you respected his game and you wanted to see it like millions of people around the world yeah gathered to watch him you know yeah it, and part of the documentary it shows his impact on basketball in general it on a made global it, scale yeah, it made it uh what it is today the nba what it is today yeah because so many people loved him and and wanted to be like him you know be like yeah. mike you know be like mike so yeah that was a big part of the nba and and basketball and then now you see the the evolution of it you see all these people like Giannis, for example, yeah. people from other countries coming into the NBA, Luka, Luka. Doncic. I love Luka. I love that man, bro. Luka's so he's good. A, he's amazing. Yeah, but you see these these different people and it just it's just a, become a fun fun league in general. Yeah. You know, I love watching the NBA now. And the I'm, competition's good and like yeah. competition's getting better, which is why I Yeah, feel I'm like, excited for this next season. Yeah. It's uh coming soon actually. You know, today's 
October 1st. October 1st, yeah. yeah and uh, Starting next week. Uh, yeah, I think the pre preseason games are starting this week. This week. At, yeah, somewhere around this week. And then the regular season in, uh, on the 23rd, I believe. Yeah. So I'm excited for it. Yeah. Like I'm excited for the Lake Show. We got to, we got to, I mean, we got Dwight Howard back. We got Russell Westbrook. We got Carmelo. Carmelo. Um, a lot of veterans. Trevor Ariza. DeAndre Jordan. Yeah, DeAndre Jordan. Um, yeah. Anthony Davis, LeBron, of course. Yeah. But that's going to be fun. I, I, yeah, I'm excited. We got to, I feel like our squad this year has like, they're a little older. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm just yeah, I'm just curious. I really hope that they can, you know, perform yeah, physically like at at their like obviously how old they are mm-hmm. cuz like you look at the Nets. They've got a <laughs> yeah, solid they got squad. A squad. They got a squad too, but those guys are just <laughs> who, younger. Who did, who did they add this this uh off season? Did they add anyone? Um I don't know. I mean, they lost DeAndre Jordan. Yeah, they I know. Um, but oh, they added Patty Mills. Oh, okay. Um so yeah, he, yeah, he's still like rocking yeah even know. in the what was it the olympics that just happened he mm-hmm. dropped like 42 or something really against like is he on french is he france, france? yeah, yeah. Um, okay yeah i want to say i i don't remember if it was the finals or not but like he he was he was hooping. i know um, I, yeah th- didn't i think it was france and usa were in the final finals yeah. i think so um, for the olympics I, I was watching that and um i was in where was it north carolina gotcha and, and yeah me and my family were there and whenever the the time difference worked out for us because in tokyo it was the the events were starting and then at and night so after we were done traveling we were at the hotel, hotel and, and then we the get to watch start. the games yeah that's so it was, awesome. it was fun watching the olympics i i every time the olympics come around i'm always excited cause excited for it it's just you get to see sports that you normally wouldn't see. Like I saw, um, what was it? Ping pong or, or table tennis. Yeah. And I'm rooting for USA yeah. for table tennis. Normally I would never watch, table, watch tennis. table tennis. If it was on whatever channel, I think ESPN like three has that shit. Yeah. You know? <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, it's not even on the regular ESPN. They're like, nah, we can't have that. It's not ESPN one. I don't watch it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so well, if it's on, if it's on the Olympics though, they put that prime time. It's like on NBC, I think. And you watch it and you're rooting for USA and, and it's, a fun experience every yeah. time, you know. Yeah, no, it's fun watching it. I feel like that's me with like a lot of sports. Like, I I mostly watch basketball. Basketball's been a one sport. Mm-hmm. Watch football. Like usually, yeah. it depends on the season. I've, I've gotten a uh, bigger a bigger fan of football in recent years. But yeah, yeah, it's it's growing on me. It's gro- Yeah, for me, I have like it depends. Like if that that time, if I just have a lot going on, then I'll mm-hmm. just, I'll just kind of tune in during playoffs yeah like playoffs and onwards i'll I'll always watch Mm -hmm. but like the regular season if i'm free then i'll like keep up with like okay who won today who won like that um even if i can't watch the full games and stuff Mm -hmm. um but like when soccer and stuff i don't really watch it on a regular basis but like yeah same Um, when when the world cup comes around mm -hmm. it's it's interesting (laughs) it's fun it's like even though the score is one to zero after ninety <laughs> minutes, like literally just watching people run up and down, like up and down the but field. That's like the it's, beauty it's of actually it. interesting. That's, the, that's yeah. the beauty of the game is yeah. that patience to figure out everything's in a formation and formation in, in, in exactly. football or soccer, right? And uh, and so whenever you see the pitch, like I'm glad that it's zoomed out and not just like focused on focused the players, because player. you could see how they're doing it. Like you could see the one pass leads to another pass that creates a triangle yeah. and they're going through it and then there's a lob to the other side yeah. and you know it all works so beautifully and then you see the end goal and yeah. you know, and when you watch the play back you realize it started with this guy right here that yeah. passed it to the, to the other other side and yeah. it's just so beautiful to watch and yeah no it's think, cool yeah go ahead um no yeah kind of like what you're saying like right I like that it's not zoomed in on one player. Mm-hmm. You can see the whole thing. So like, there's always like, if if there's like one person in the middle, like they're always just passing it to him. He's like the middleman, kind of getting trying to see which side they can attack from, right? Yeah. Um, yeah more yeah. people should be. I, I think over here it's not as popular. I mean, there's the MLS and and more people enjoy that, but yeah, it's not as popular as let's say the UK and and other countries, especially in the in Europe. Yeah, it's like big. 
it's you know, big and there. Um, South America and those countries down there. But over here, I think it's starting to become a bigger thing. Yeah. I, I mean, I see MLS games sometimes and it's the stadiums are p- packed. Mm-hmm. It's filled up with people that want to watch the game. Yeah. And it's a beautiful sport. I love I love watching it and I, and I also love playing it. You play? You know? I mean, I don't play that often. I haven't played in a, in a while, but yeah. I I think let's see. When I was had to be 6th grade, I I think I started playing my friend uh Spencer Spencer uh he was in my elementary school right and we c- every we had recess like this was elementary school so you had recess and lunch and yeah. every recess and lunch you'd find us playing soccer like they had the one one goal uh and w- like basically like a few balls and stuff and yeah we'd we'd gather some people and we'd start playing yeah and this kid was a fucking like he he was probably the best person in our school and he's still amazing like he he's really great at soccer yeah and he did he did he does like so many tricks he um you know the around the world where you kick it up and then yeah while you're juggling he he knew all that shit yeah and step overs and i started watching that and started to understand how difficult like to to just um to master these skills it's it's difficult to do yeah and so as i started playing with them every recess every lunch i started to get better and better yeah and then i my parents put me in this league you know there's uh you could just join like you know how you just join yeah, a league yeah. or whatever it's like juice or something uh i forget what it's called but just yeah one of those whatever. leagues yeah, yeah. and then i started playing in that and that's when i started to get really good like the first game I scored like three goals and oh, then wow. the coach was like, put this guy in every time, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I, was, I was, I was pretty good, but it was because of my, my friend Spencer who, who showed me like at, at that point, I didn't really give a fuck about soccer. Yeah. I was just all in on basketball. But then when I, then I just really loved the game because yeah. it was so fun to just interact with people and, just kicking the ball the first time you like curve it the first time you curve a ball it's the best feeling in the world you can do that yeah, yeah oh it's, snap it's insane because first i spent i probably watched like over a hundred videos on how to curve a soccer ball like because i you know fifa right yeah fifa uh has in fifa you could play different players and shit yeah and you see them curving it and you watch uh Messi and Ronaldo and yeah. all these great great players do th- do this one shot and they get it in somehow it curves in right when you think that it's not going in yeah. it just dips and curves in and the goalkeeper can barely touch it like it's not there enough yeah. and he they score and I was like I got to learn how to do this cuz yeah. this is insane that's crazy I never like how, how could you think that a ball can be kicked and it just dip somehow like, yeah whoever it's literally thought just that going was straight and then it curves like yeah what what? The, that, that doesn't make sense <laughs> that doesn't make sense at all and the first time i got that i was i was beyond like happy and excited because i spent a lot of time working on that yeah it's just a fun sport bro and I, i've like i said I, I got into football i mean I, I don't play football yeah but i still love different sports because it all bring it's it just brings everybody together. That's the biggest part for me about sports. Is sports. It just brings everybody get everybody together. The people that are watching it, yeah, and the people that are playing it. it it's a community of sorts, and yeah. I, I love it. Every every single sport. And yeah, I'm just that's yeah that's the mad one respect. Yeah, yeah, that's the one big thing I love about sports, right? Like one thing, whether you play it or you just watch it, mm-hmm. it brings people together, even if you don't know anyone. Like you can. Literally yesterday, I was just walking. I was walking on campus, and then I went out at night. I was wearing a Laker shirt. Mm-hmm. I think throughout the day, I think three people were like, "Oh, dude, nice shirt." Really? Literally, don't know these people at all. And like, it's cool because like you meet people. Like, it's like you can just like even Connect. when you're just walking by, you're wearing a Lakers hat or like a Dodgers hat, whatever, right? Mm-hmm. A Rams jersey, whatever it is, Anything. right? Like, 
it's like, oh, dude, nice shirt. Like, I like <laughs> it. And you're like, oh, dude, like, respect. Yeah. And right? Even and the even the rival fans say something, you know, it's like, like, you can't be wearing that yeah. shit. <laughs> 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 it's like you're seeing a Lakers or a Celtics jersey with yeah. like someone in LA. It's like, get out of here. Get out of here. Yeah. But we all, it's always with love, you know? Yeah, like, it's, it's not really, it's not like, yeah, yeah, it's not hate. It's, yeah, yeah, it's just like jokingly, you know? Like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, we're going to whoop you guys. Yeah. <laughs> uh, man, I love sports, man. And yeah, it gets me going. The, the, what do you think? What do, what do you think is going to happen this year in the finals for NBA? I mean, I'm always a Laker fan and I always expect the best from them. So I, I'm going to put Lakers, even though I haven't seen them play together. Yeah. But you think Suns are going to be back or not? Sun, do, do they still have their original they team? Do. I think it's yeah. just, they didn't really change. I didn't hear any changes or. Yeah. I think they, they're trying just, to rerun it back, but yeah, we'll see. But they, they whooped their ass the last yeah. time. No, uh, they were, the, they were really, really the good last year. Yeah. But, I don't know. They did choke against. They just literally couldn't stop Giannis mm-hmm. in the finals. Um, yeah, but that was well deserved. I mean, yeah. he went all out. Like I think he had what 40, 50 points. Yeah, uh, in, in that in those last few games, he had he was scoring like, insane like amount of points and and he rebounds. Can't shoot, and he still he still <laughs> yeah. scored that yeah. many. Like <laughs> he literally just drove in, and they could, there's no one to stop him there. Nothing, bro. I mean, I mean, I never. Like his his size has a lot to do with it, I think. Yeah. And how he's built. Yeah. He's very agile. He is. Where, yeah. Even with his his uh his height, you know, he's I don't I don't know exactly how tall he is, but that size usually it would be a center playing yeah. with that height. But he plays, you know, like a, a power forward. Sometimes like he forward, he brings yeah. up the the ball even. Like he's he plays point guard sometimes just yeah. brings it up and runs plays you've never seen that before in uh in a player but he has that capability and he works on it yeah i mean he's not the best shooter but he he's shown that he doesn't have to be be a bet yeah he doesn't have to you know, be a good but shooter. he still works on it I, yeah. I, you see him in practice uh working on free throws yeah. working on his shot mid-range whatever like he, yeah. he he wants to develop to the point where He's unguardable. Yeah. And he's still like he's still pretty unguardable. Yeah, he still is. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I'm excited. I think the I'm I'm still gonna put Lakers in the number one seed. Yeah. I'm, like I just gotta root I for them. I have to. Uh, you gotta expect the best from your team. I don't even if you're a Detroit Pistons fan, you gotta just fucking. You gotta go, put them go going them. to the finals. <laughs> yeah, we're going. Even though sorry to tell you, you're not going to the finals. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, and from the East, I don't know. I think I think Nets will be back. I think Nets are going to be yeah. there. Like, I was expecting Nets to be there last year, but obviously injuries hit. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I, if a fully healthy squad, I think That's Lakers and Nets. the biggest thing is, is the health of yeah. the players. You know, uh, there was this big controversy recently, actually, about the vaccination of players. players I don't know if you've yeah. heard about it. Yeah. But I think n- over 95% of the players are vaccinated, but there are two cities that are requiring requiring it san francisco right yeah and san francisco and new york yeah are saying you have to be vaccinated in order to play so you can't even be at the arena i think if you're not vaccinated so got it i mean for a long time yes it's been a choice for a lot of people i think it's been a choice choice whether yeah. to get it or not but now the nba even i even most sports leagues i'm pretty sure i don't know if the nfl did it they might have done it in some areas, hmm. but the the players are required to be vaccinated. And for me, it's always been if it's a choice. I mean, yeah. you know, if you have medical conditions and shit, of course, like, you know, yeah. be talk to your doctor and stuff. But if you don't have that and you just have some belief that it's not safe or whatever, you know, it's your choice. Yeah, I, I'm not gonna like try to persuade you and yeah. give you all the points of how good it is. Yeah, for you, because you know, I just do it. The only reason I took the vaccine is because I want to have the freedom to do to live my normal life. Yeah, you know, I don't want to be restricted. Yeah, in the fact that okay, you have to have a vaccine to do this thing. You know, yeah. so I, I just do it. Whatever, fuck it. I, yeah. I really don't care. 
just so I could have the freedom to do whatever I want and live yeah. life normally. And that's what happens when you live in a society mm-hmm. is that you have to sometimes let go of some freedom yeah. of choice so that it's for the betterment, yeah, of, for the betterment of, every, of everybody else. Yeah. Um, it's funny because like I see like, I think Krispy Kreme did like, Oh, if you have, if you show your vaccination card, mm-hmm. you get a free donut and they even upped it to two donuts, right? Really? Like every single day. Like if you, if you show your vaccination card, you can get a two free donuts every day. Mm-hmm. Panera did like, uh, a free bagel or something. There's different places that do different things. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and like, I think some places require you to show proof of vaccination if you want to enter. Like, I don't know if sports really? arenas do it or not. Um, I think Lakers, they're like Staples. They actually have last season. I remember like they had towards the end, they had like a vaccinated section yeah, yeah. and an unvaccinated, I, like, mm-hmm. you know, just like open, right? Vaccinated section. People are still able to gather a little closer together. Unvaccinated. It's every like six <laughs> feet. So it's like in that whole section, there's like 20 people or yeah. something. Um, but like, even in that situation, like a lot of people were like, there's literally a market for trying to buy vaccination cards. Oh yeah. And I I heard my friends said they made fake ones. Yeah. Yeah. Like fake ones. Like why? (laughs) No, but the thing is like people buy it. Like they're like, I've seen those things go for like 400, 500 bucks. Like people will pay that much. I was like, the cost of get it is <laughs> zero. zero like to <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so get the actual get vaccine. The vaccine like wh- why are you paying 500 God bucks damn. for a card yeah to just say that you have it when you don't right like <laughs> when, you, when it's already being given out you know for exactly free. yeah um and it's been relatively safe you know there exactly. are there's yeah. certain cases and that's with every vaccine that's i think with and, anything and yeah. anything yeah that you have some side effects and certain conditions develop because of the vaccine but for most for me you had maybe like a fever uh, not not a fever but you didn't feel 100 100 percent you just felt a little tired that day and you go through that and after after you sleep the next day it's yeah you're you're like good again yeah you're good and that's all i had yeah and you know there are people that have that get covid because of the vaccine or because of or get it after get COVID after taking the vaccine, but not because of the vaccine. They just get it somehow. Yeah. And that's, I think, I, I or I know how that would persuade people to not, not take it. Take it. Like, yeah. You got the vaccine. How could you get COVID again? Yeah. Or, or how could you get COVID if you have the vaccine? If you have, if you say that it protects people. Yeah. But at the same time, I think it's more for, if you won't die from getting COVID yeah. because of the vaccine, it's more pr- protection is against that. Like it's a, a 99% chance that you won't die yeah. if you get COVID, if you have the vaccine. Yeah. That's what they're going for. I think I just take the odds, right? Like if, if you don't have the vaccine, right. And you're going to, if you come in contact with someone, chance of you getting it are really high mm-hmm. versus if you have the vaccine, there's a lesser there's a chance. lesser chance and i'm willing to take the lesser yeah, chance take right the lesser like chance, take the, you know and it's obviously you're still running the mm-hmm. risk of getting it mm-hmm. but your chances are just lower and yeah and just yeah. to have the freedom of doing whatever you want to do without yeah. having that thing in your head or of is does this person have covid or yeah. you know like having to stay away from people yeah exactly human beings we need community we need that interaction social interaction you, know, you need it you need it and zoom can last for however long it wants to you know you could have that interaction but there's nothing like this yeah there's nothing like in-person conversations and meeting people exactly there's nothing like it i mean it's it's a different type of connection you build with the person yeah when you're able to interact there's like energy flowing yeah you know where that you don't get with the a screen yeah yeah. That too, when like the camera's off and the audio is just off, <laughs> yeah. it's like, Yo, what do you look like? Though? <laughs> You're just s- standing there or sitting there, looking into a blank void yeah. of space. Yeah, you know? <laughs> just says like it just has the name right there. Yeah, yeah, it's not it's not the best conversate or best way to uh, communicate at all. Yeah, but it, it had to be done. But I'm glad we're over that. We're yeah. Hopefully, I. I Hopefully we're moving in the 
right direction towards like past all this stuff yeah you know, just getting back to normal yeah and i think it'll, it's gonna be even better than normal more people are gonna take a precaution and a lot of people had time to think over the quarantine i guess you could say yeah they they understood or life slowed down for them yeah especially in this country everybody's always on the go like yeah you're you're doing something you're you have something planned and you're looking forward to this next event or this meeting or this yeah. uh f- time with your friends whatever it is and as soon as you had to stay home and you had your time to yourself to yeah. think about life to think about whatever it was people had realizations of oh i don't enjoy what i do as much as i thought i did yeah you know and so they had a choice to change it up you know yeah. it was it was that point for a lot of people i think yeah and it's helped uh, and and it, there have been pros and cons to the pandemic of course yeah. but if you look for the pros you'll find it you know yeah. if you look for good throughout it you'll yeah. find it and that's that's with anything but in in this case you have to look for good cuz the news will fucking get you if you just keep yeah. paying on uh, paying attention to the negativity yeah or you what's just keep been... the news on like yeah. oh cases are rising cases are rising cases are rising <laughs> it's like oh shit okay yeah. um like that's yeah. gonna everyone ruin just, your it's consciousness like, yeah everyone's just like you're just surrounded by negative vibes right mm-hmm. but then also Let during me... okay yeah sorry about that the this camera um got cut off hopefully it's working again um but yeah like what i was saying was when you're just surrounded by that news right like mm-hmm. you're looking you see like oh cases are rising cases are rising like you're surrounded by a lot of that negativity but on the positive side you're also at home spending more time with your family right yeah that was probably the that's for me i can safely say that was the most time i've ever spent with like my family you're with them mm-hmm. obviously you're doing your work they're doing their work but like everyone comes out for a snack everyone comes out for a break you're still like okay like you can talk and stuff mm-hmm. You get more time just throughout the day once everyone finishes work before they start work. Like, yeah, you ju- you're just with them, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and then we even started doing like we'd all go out on like evening walks and stuff, right? Because like everything's like everything yeah. was close. So, like even just like within the community, right? We just go for a walk. Mm-hmm. Don't go out more anywhere, outdoor. but just like yeah, yeah. the first uh, week or so of the of quarantining, I saw the whole neighborhood just go on walks and walks. stuff because it and kids were playing outside and everything that i've never seen for a long yeah. time you know i when i was a kid I would, I would always play outside and stuff but yeah i mean i don't know about these kids nowadays but <laughs> they don't like playing outside i guess <laughs> but <laughs> yeah you saw kids going on bike rides and and hanging out outside in the front and yeah. front front yards and stuff yeah and it was it was nice to see you know people actually and trying to enjoy their time even though they're they have to be in a, a quarantine space you know yeah like even i can safely say during this time like i've gotten to talk to a lot more of my neighbors like even just during people that are just like on the other side of the community when we're going out for a walk it's like oh okay i see you like mm-hmm. every day at like 7 30 right like because yeah. you're just crossing paths at that time um and then you just kind of stop and talk and like now whenever we see each other we just holler at each other like yeah. you, it, it's cool um and so i think there's still a good amount of like pros that came out of this mm-hmm. time like and as shitty as it was there's yeah. still some good that came out of it yeah and with i mean i think that's with everything in life if you look for bad you're gonna get it yeah you, you're not gonna escape uh escape the the consequences or or the bad results but if you focus on the good if you focus on positivity that's what you'll see you know it's it's something weird about that energy is i i've noticed within myself if something bad happens i always try to look for the good the good yeah anything like if 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 i if there's traffic if there's um if i get sick you know i I always try to believe that it's because it or it had to happen for something good to happen. Yeah. You know, it wouldn't, it, it just doesn't come for me to suffer. Yeah. You know, that's, or else 
I think it'll ruin your day. It'll ruin everything that you're trying to do. Is yeah. That I to me, the mind is like the most powerful thing about human beings mm -hmm. because without that, you wouldn't. You, everything stems from that. The, the action you take, your personality, yeah. how you interact with people, and if if you choose to pollute that with negative 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 thought. thinking thinking that or pessimist pessimism i guess yeah pessimistic thinking then all you're gonna have around you are those types of of things happening to you yeah it's those people coming around you people like that uh yeah. people like pessimistic uh thinkers and the social media i mean you, we talk about twitter yeah. um a lot of Twitter is a bunch of political ramblings yeah. that people just go back and forth. Some person has this idea. You see in the comments yeah. that they're just bashing whatever they have to say for no reason, really. Like, why why hate somebody else because they believe something? Yeah. You know, it doesn't affect you in any other way. It doesn't, you know, yeah. you're, they're, they're typing their thoughts out. Yeah. You could... There is no point in hurting or going against them what yeah. what good does that make you feel how how good does that make you feel it doesn't it doesn't yeah. you know and like even on like twitter it's just like random accounts like jim 404 yeah. like <laughs> who is that <laughs> and uh, like you're just having a mindless argument with him like a twitter war with this random dude mm -hmm. that like you don't even know yeah and and some people they find you know joy and like, trolling people exactly and stuff, like you know? people are just out there to instigate it yeah like they're not there yeah it. they're they're just there to troll with you like they don't sometimes they don't actually mean it they're just there just to spark some fuel into it <laughs> and like you know just to get something started like if yeah. they can get a twitter war going then it's yeah they're, not, they're fine with it they're happy <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, just entertainment happy. for them yeah um when everybody has a voice that's that's what you're dealing with is everybody has a voice, Everyone has a, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and even with that, you know, I've, I've gotten hateful comments and shit because of doing the podcast. People yeah. don't agree sometimes with, uh, what I'm saying yeah. and, and clips on Instagram, TikTok, whatever. Yeah. But I never s say to them, you know, this F is what you, you got to believe. F you. Yeah. Or, yeah. This you can't say that about me. I let it all be. Like if you say that yeah. about me, I, all I do is just spread love. I, I put heart emojis yeah. because I, I you know <laughs> because Gary V, you know Gary V, yeah. right? He always says the people who hate, you know, feel empathy for them. Mm -hmm. So understand that they wouldn't even say that if they had if they didn't have hate in them. You know, mm -hmm. they have something that they're struggling with that is being manifested into them realizing or to them posting about this comment or yeah. saying something hurtful to somebody. Yeah. They wouldn't even say that if it, they didn't have pain themselves. Yeah. So I always have that in mind because, you know, people, you don't know what people are going through. You don't know that. Yeah. Right. They're struggling. They, you know, something might, might've happened with their parents yeah. A lot of life shit happens, but I might not know that, but every instance that it happens, I try to empathize and feel for them and for just them give them doing. yeah, love cuz exactly. they need it. You know, if you don't if they don't have it, you know, I try to give it to them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, obviously like I feel like that happens a lot, right? Like if someone's giving off like bad vibes or just negative energy, who knows? Like maybe they're going through they're, they're just having a rough day. You don't know what they've gone through. Yeah. And like <laughs> I mean, they, they're they not obligated to tell mm. you. So, like... The best you could do is just empathize. Exactly. Like, you reacting in a negative manner is not going to make things any better. Mm -hmm. Empathizing probably will. And also, if you just try spreading back, like, positive vibes. Yeah. Who knows? That might actually change their day and that'll... They won't be spreading negative vibes to other people. Mm -hmm. Maybe your positive vibes will rub off on them and they'll go spread that to other people, yeah, right? because it sparks something. It Every does. time, you know... If you're walking down the street and somebody says you have a n nice shirt on, you know, yeah. you'll remember that. Yeah. And it's and not because you have a nice shirt, it's because they took the time to say it to you and that it like yeah. 
you, you feel that energy from them. Yeah. And it's powerful stuff when, when you get comments like that or when people that are positive get come into your life because they lift everybody up. Exactly. You know? it, and same with negativity. If you have somebody negative, they lift everybody down. Yeah. And so I always try to be the positive person so that everybody, even if you're having a shitty day, yeah. I try to help you see the perspective of like that. Not everything's bad. Yeah. You know, you might have failed the test, but look, you know, yeah. there's a, there's a Laker game on tonight. Let's go watch it. You yeah. Know? There's, there's people or there's ideas like that, that I've tried to develop so that, yeah. because it makes life easier for everybody. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah. It like reminded me. So I, during this, like throughout this, like last year, I went to Chicago for the first time. Mm -hmm. And like when we were there, love that city. Yeah. That was my first time there. It was it was fun. I love the city. Um, but even when we're just walking around, like whether it's during the daytime, like literally late night, right? We're walking by. Like when you're walking by, people will like, they'll just say like, hey, what's up? Like, how's it going? And like random stuff like that. There's like street performers and stuff mm -hmm. like out in like downtown. And like you can just go up to them. You can talk to them. You can have a conversation. Um, and then like I remember like we were – we were in downtown and I was just with a couple of my friends and we were taking some pictures, mm -hmm. right? Took like some like, you know, smiling ones and then you take some <laughs> yeah. funny ones. And then afterwards, like we were trying to like set like the phone up against like a bottle so that we could take it. And then like, oh, they just came and she's like, oh, here, do you want me to take it? It's mm -hmm. like, oh, yeah. like perfect. Thanks. Like, th like those random acts it. of kindness. Yeah, yeah, like that. Right. And so then we did it. And then afterwards they were, she was taking a picture for her family. So we're like, oh, hey, like, do you want us to take one for you? And she's like, Actually, that'd be great. Yeah. It's so like, you know, it's just small things like that, right? Mm -hmm. Like, we didn't ask her to do it, but she, she offered. Insisted. And, yeah. like, it helped us out. We helped her out. Mm -hmm. You know, everyone's happy. Everybody wins. Everyone wins. And you move on. Like, you go on with your day. And it's just, like, those small things just... Yeah. You remember it, right? Yeah, you remember it. Um, like, that, those are just, like, from Chicago, right? Even, obviously, there's, like, the buildings, like, the architecture, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. But I also remember the people there. Like, the people there were... Nice. They were nice, yeah. right? Like you can you can vibe with them, and then like it just it's like different in every city, right? Mm -hmm. like, the, <laughs> so, yeah, the people have a lot to do with the city. Yeah, I know some people say L.A. isn't the nicest city and stuff. There's there people are always you know moving around and they're snobby in a way. Yeah, they, they high fashion, I guess. Yeah, but some cities like Chicago, like uh, smaller cities. Um, they they have that that feel where you you just know when you talk to somebody you need help with directions yeah they're willing to help right yeah that's too we I remember we got lost in the subway <laughs> yeah. that was my first time there we took the subway and I was like Dude, like how do I do this because like, I've only been I've been in New York but that time my parents did the subway stuff uh -huh. this is my first time I'm just with friends right yeah I'm trying to figure out how to get up and down like from the airport to like the city going mm -hmm. up and down um like this subway like unit right and yeah we're like yo we're at the station but do we go this way or this way <laughs> like this either we're gonna end up like really far away from where we need to go or we're gonna end up there yeah and like just like two people are like oh are you guys trying to head to this place we're like yeah like all right yeah. go this way okay like, yeah. sweet thanks man appreciate it small things like that make a, a difference yeah you know? and it just starts with uh uh an awareness i guess of the situation, whatever exactly. it is, you know, be aware of the people around you. Some people look in distress and if you, if you're trying to help them, it makes their lives a lot easier too. And, and it help, it makes you feel good yeah. for helping them. Yeah. Right. But yeah, speaking of Chicago and stuff and, and that city, that's one of my favorite cities is yeah. it's, I've, I've been to New York. I haven't been recently, but to me it's, uh, it's up there with New York. It might even be better for me because yeah. it's just such a, especially in the summertime. If you go in the winter, you know you're you're screwed. You're pretty fucked. If you go in the winter, <laughs> you're gonna freeze freeze your ass off if you go in the winter. But Chicago in the summertime, there's nothing like it. Yeah, there's nothing like it. Yeah, we went. Um, yeah, we went right. Literally, we finished finals last semester. Mm -hmm. Next week we went. And so we went during summertime. It was amazing. The weather was like cool and stuff. 
I've heard during winter it can get <laughs> rough yeah, out dude. there. You see, like pipes are frozen, and yeah. like literally they turn on the faucet, and literally just like it's literally just ice icicles there. Oh my god! <laughs> and so I yeah, I figured it's like rough during winter, but during summer mm-hmm. it was good. It's, like speaking of weather, when we were there, we were. The weather was like good when we were there, mm-hmm. and the day we were leaving, it started drizzling as we were leaving, right? Yeah. So we're like, okay, like let, I guess we're, we're going anyway, so it doesn't really matter. We get to the airport, we check in, we're like waiting at the gate, and then afterwards, we get on the plane, and we get like one of those like amber alerts type of thing, like the National Weather Service is saying mm-hmm. that a tornado is gonna is passing through the airport. Yeah, and notification. So like, yeah, so we're like. Yo, we're in the plane, though. Like, what do we do? What's protocol for this? And so that's happening. But then it's also, like, raining and, like, there's lightning, there's thunder. And, like, literally the wind, Mm -hmm. It's there's such strong wind. The turbulence? Like, no. So we were literally parked there at the airport still. So, like, the wind was just so strong that, like, our plane was shaking, right? And so we're like, yo, there's no way they're taking (laughs) off. There's literally, it's pouring there's w- it's really strong wind. Uh-huh. There's lightning, thunder, and there's a hur- like a tornado, a, hurt, yeah. a tornado coming through Warning. this. Sp- yeah. yeah, and so we're like, well, we're fucked. Like, we're not, <laughs> we're not leaving from here, right? Uh-huh. And so we, they, they're like, okay, yeah, you guys are gonna get off the um, airport, or, or mm-hmm. you guys are gonna get off the plane. You guys are just gonna wait in like the, um, like in the airport. Yeah, um, at the gate, right? Mm-hmm. So we waited there. And our plan was just to take off at 10 p.m. We ended up taking off at 4 a.m. Wow. Like, it just kept getting delayed and delayed and delayed. Yeah. I mean, there's nothing you could do. You can't. Yeah. Yeah. That was, like, when we were leaving. And when we were flying in, weather weather was, like, awesome there, right? Mm-hmm. And we, it's like, oh, we're 30 minutes away from landing, right? And so we were about to land. And they're, like, they just weren't going down. They were just, like, hovering over the city. And we're, like, okay, maybe they there's just no space at the airport yeah. or something. Um, but they're like, oh, actually, there's a storm going through the city right now, so we're going to divert you guys to Minneapolis. And so we're like, what? <laughs> what? wait, what? <laughs> Isn't Milwaukee the closest, like, major city? Uh, they're like, yeah, it's full, though, so we're going to be going to Minnesota. And so wow. we're, like, taking us from Chicago, Chicago to <laughs> Minnesota. Minneapolis. Like, <laughs> so uh, then we got there. So, like, we had some hiccups with the weather, but... Okay. Overall, when so we, when you so you had a drive to Chicago or no? So we got there. They wouldn't let us off the plane. Oh, okay, so they waited. They, they waited. waited they were just waiting until the weather like cleared out over there. Um, and so afterwards, they pretty once like they got the go from like Chicago. Mm-hmm. Then they came they took back. off yeah. from Minneapolis and they took us straight to Chicago and we got yeah. there. Yeah. See that if you go in the winter, you're you're probably gonna get shit like that. Yeah. You know? And. There, but it's probably worse. Yeah, <laughs> it's f- fucking way worse. Because I remember um, it was a few years ago. There was some article that I read. I remember it having a picture of, is it Lake Michigan? Um, it, I believe yeah, that's yeah. what's right uh, there, right by the right city. Right there, yeah. And part of it was frozen. Frozen, yeah. yeah. Frozen. You know how cold it has to be to freeze for, that for amount For the whole of, lake to be frozen. Yeah, for that amount of what like it's a big lake it's not if you go to chicago and you see and you you're at the beach area yeah. and you just look towards the lake you can't see the other side right? yeah it's that big of yeah. a lake i i don't know the exact no it's uh, massive yeah you know, miles it is but it's fucking huge and so to have it freeze like that it has to get really cold like i think it was negative something negative 20 around there and you know i couldn't even imagine yeah you know how cold that is i'm just used to i'm like used to 70 degree weather here (laughs) we're we're blessed (laughs) to live here it's like oh 60 60 degrees it's a little chilly (laughs) (laughs) anything below 60 i'm like ah this is too cold yeah like i'm literally just riding in like shorts all the time every every day bro it's a and i think right now it's 90 degrees or yeah. something in October, which <laughs> <laughs> this is our winter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It rains sometimes, but not really. Yeah. Maybe it's, like two, three we, times. We need the year. rain, yeah. but yeah, somehow we're surviving off here. Yeah. Yeah. Man. Yeah. I remember in geology, though, I took a geology class. Yeah. And in Orange County specifically, we have this water. I forget. 
I forget the exact name, but it's some type of water system in which yeah. it basically when whenever you let's say uh, use the bathroom, you turn on the water, uh, like the sink, wash your hands, mm-hmm. all that water gets transferred into this. Um, I don't want to call it factory, but something like that. Yeah. And so it basically cleans the water and everything, yeah. and it puts that same water back out into so so that people can use it back into the tap water. So yeah, and it, we and o- Orange County specifically, it has the world's best system for that. Like it's it's oh, really? regarded as one of the best systems to b- clean water. There's a there's a specific word and and. I'm forgetting it, but I'll look it up after. Yeah. Um, but I, when I heard that from my professor, I was I was astonished. Like, yeah. damn, we have that over here where, because it doesn't rain that often, so we need something like that. Yeah. Um, where instead of letting all that water go out back into the ocean and waiting for it to rain again so yeah. that it fills up the reserves, Yeah. You, we could just keep that water in the system and just clean it um and keep using it you know, yeah it's it's much more efficient especially if it doesn't rain often yeah and 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 over here it's it's working you know you got this on one hand and then in india when you go to brush <laughs> you taste like the ass in the water <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah and right now it's actually it's um, I think rain season in India. You so they're getting soon right now. Dude, they get three three inches of rain yeah. in a night. You know, it it floods everything. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah I remember the very. I I've been there once, and that first time I got there, we got there, and then like that that night it started pouring. Really. And it's like the rain's like warm water, right? Mm. And so it was. It rained like six inches in six hours. Like, damn, it was nuts. And I was like, man, California got six inches this year. Like, <laughs> I know. <laughs> it was, yeah, it's crazy, but it, it it's, I feel like it's cool. The people there just kind of know how to get through it, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, they've adapted yeah. through, uh, through just surviving it for so long. Yeah, you know, if uh, if your town is located in uh, a flood area yeah. i guess where it floods often I, I guess now you could take precautions especially if you have the internet and yeah you you track the weather you can see if it's raining and have some type of precaution take place but even then i think india especially in those towns they don't have the infrastructure yeah. to do a lot but they just deal with it whatever happens yeah if it destroys some uh some parts of the building they rebuild it they yeah they know how it works they're not uh they're not just gonna move out of that place because it happens yeah right over there if it like rains like six inches they're like they're like walking the water's like yeah. up to like their like <laughs> legs yeah up to their legs and they're just walking through it yeah, on the other crazy. hand over here if it rains like half an inch people you, don't know how to drive people, yeah people don't know how to drive like we we're just talking about that right like but, Everyone uh, just automatically just starts going like 30 miles per hour <laughs> on the freeway and then like, boom, it's uh, like bumper cars. Yeah. Like, you know, just like cars just hit each other. It's like, oh, snap, you really forgot how to drive just because it like started drizzling a little. Yeah, just uh, that over here, because we're so used to having clear skies. I mean, right now you can't see, but yeah. it's clear clear, at, yeah. clear as day, you know. You can't have anything better than better this. Better than this. <laughs> so when you when you take that and every so often you sprinkle some clouds and it rains, <laughs> they, people get fucked over. They're, they're like, what do I do? <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. It's, but I wouldn't want to live anywhere like yeah. that doesn't have sunshine like this. Yeah. Once you get used to it, um, it's hard to leave hard to experience other things that have you know snow and 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 days where you can't leave the house because yeah. the weather's so bad bad yeah, yeah. it's well, tough yeah but like chicago is fun and all but i don't know living mm-hmm. there if i'm gonna if like half of or like a quarter of the year if it's just like everything's frozen like that <laughs> i don't yeah, know i'd just, rather i'd travel there in the summertime that's the best thing yeah. especially those nor or 
yeah northern uh states yeah especially uh it's better to go when it's summer and, and you know the weather is is going to be pleasant because you'll enjoy it better if yeah. you could do every activity that you want to do yeah go visit it, the places where you want to visit like the bean is yeah. very popular yeah everybody loves going there and if it's snowing and stuff i mean it looks cool but it, it's not the same it doesn't if it's, feel cool yeah yeah, it's yeah like, if it's feel it's not good. the same as having a sunny day and and yeah. everybody out and about yeah. doing their thing just continue their normal day-to-day lives yeah. yeah yeah that's it's crazy though but climate change has been a big factor now yeah that that's i mean we've heard about the hurricanes we hear about the fires over here yeah um it's gotten you know to the significantly worse yeah significantly uh, harder to to predict when what's going to happen yeah. every season it's something different you know the hurricanes are happening earlier than normal and yeah every year it's becoming with more force and the fires in California have uh, are still continuing i don't know what the situation is but i believe a few weeks ago we saw the smoke I don't know if you 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 where from. Uh, I think this this was either last week or, or two weeks ago. Uh-huh. There was some type of smoke in the air. It it looked like clouds, but it uh-huh. was actually smoke. Oh, and yeah. it was from a fire in Central California. Oh, yeah, wow. and so that the wind brought the fire all the way, or not not the fire, but the smoke, smoke. all the way to yeah. the coast. And so you had that uh, you had that smoke just covering everything, you know, yeah. and, it, and it was high enough where you didn't feel the effects of what smoke does to your system and everything. But it was it just went right over. So yeah. it covered the sun and everything. And yeah. so you 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 see these these um, circumstances happening because of of human uh uh human uh, i don't want to say what's the word human impact yeah human right. impact yeah i i don't know if you remember like this is i want to say last year um last year when we had you know there was like that fire by like santiago um or like that irvine area mm-hmm. um and like the fire was coming over i i know in particular in like your belinda the I think just everywhere in this area, you look up in the sky and it's all just like, really? it's just like, you can tell that there's a massive fire mm-hmm. because like even in the air it just smells like there's just like Something. ashes falling yeah. everywhere like it just like you can smell it's super strong, and so well, I was at work that day and even just inside we couldn't turn on the AC because all the you could yeah, like all smoke. that stuff yeah. just comes inside mm-hmm. the the vents and it just like. That, that's the only everything. way that mm-hmm. like if you keep it off that's the only way to not get the ashes and like the rest <laughs> yeah. to come into the building right mm-hmm. um and then like the firefighters came and said like oh you guys got to evacuate from here like, wow fires like it's it's coming this way mm-hmm. um and so like that day even at work so like i work for at, like for the city of your and like over there they were having like the shelter like the facility i work at there was going to be like one of the shelter places mm-hmm. and people just had to like pick up shifts just to like you know start yeah, yeah. working because it was it was going to be open 24 yeah. hours mm-hmm. just so if people so are people need evacuating mm-hmm. like they need somewhere to go um but like that was like the first time that i kind of experienced like where it was like kind of close by but then like i always i always see like pictures and stuff like when that stuff was happening like the whole west coast was yeah. on like oregon was like when you're the the fire is so close to your house that the sometimes it 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 sparks the fire yeah. near your house or like on your house. Yeah. And they, the firefighters had to go in and yeah. And you know, and those guys are probably the most courageous people you'll yeah. ever meet. Is yeah. To going straight into it. Yeah. Too. Every um, every, you know, from police to the paramedics to yeah. fire department, all those guys um, they they sacrifice their time their time and their lives to help others like who would think that when when 9-11 happened right yeah and and you saw the smoke P- 
people were running away from that building yeah. and at the same time you saw firemen and police uh, officers yeah, just police running officers into it running and going straight into yeah. that building you know yeah. that takes a lot of heart and uh courage like i said and yeah it's kind of un, un- imaginable if you aren't in that circumstance like to yeah. do that because it's your job it's your duty yeah and some people have lost their lives uh because of of that but i mean if, if we asked them they would probably do it no matter uh, yeah do it um again because they they felt that responsibility you know? yeah i remember i don't know if you've seen it recently they netflix came out with like that 9-11 documentary I think it was so. Like yeah, the yeah. Twenty year. Um, it was like the twenty year anniversary mm-hmm. for it, right? Mm-hmm. And so, in that, they showed like there's a lot of things that I saw that um, I didn't know when mm-hmm. I like even after all these years, you you hear about it, right? You feel like you know you're putting bits and phrases like pieces together, yeah. And you feel like you kind of have a story line, right? There's just so many parts to it that I just didn't know after what like that I saw, and like even during it, like there's a lot of footage that people had that they, Netflix did a really good job mm-hmm. of acquire, like yeah, gathering acquiring. all those stuff all those like videos and all that stuff and putting it together mm-hmm. um, but even in that you see and testimonies of other uh, the people that were actually there there yeah um, and like even in that I saw that's I was like okay well you hear that people were running away you saw pictures of that but you mm-hmm. don't like that's when I actually saw videos of like literally guys are in suits dress like girls are in dresses and like there's literally just like faces like b- like covered in like ash and like there's mm-hmm. just like pieces of like the building debris. that's just like debris like all over them like literally it's like, unimaginable yeah that yeah. but then while all that's happening they're all literally just running out for safety and survival right mm-hmm. and at the same time you see these guys uh um like first responders uh fire department and all these guys that are running mm-hmm. in and at that time, so I don't know if you know, but the um, when like that first plane hit, they the fire alarm went off, and when the fire alarm goes off, elevators stop. Really? So people that are on like the hundred and something floor, right? Mm-hmm. For them to get down, there's no elevate, like the elevator shaft isn't working, mm-hmm. and so for the fi- for the firefighters to get there, they had they to can't climb take up. the elevator mm-hmm. up, so they climbed up over a hundred flights of stairs. Yeah to go get those people and they started as they were coming down Mm -hmm. the second plane hit um Mm -hmm. and so like i didn't know that like all these years right like i was like okay well i think it was just time but i didn't know that like first of all their equipment's heavy (laughs) Heavy, bro heavy so heavy it's like 50 pounds or yeah like maybe even more like even just like the all that stuff 50 60 pounds yeah they're carrying all that stuff and then on top of that, they're rushing. So they're running up like a mm-hmm. hundred flights plus of stairs. People are coming down. down. So you had to, and, yeah. and so you, you basically had to not injure other people that are exactly s- stampeding down yeah. and go up stairs as well. Yeah. Cause so that was like another yeah. part of the documentary. I remember cause everyone was running down, mm-hmm. but then it slowed down the process because as they were coming down, they pretty much had to make one side coming down, the other side going up. Yeah. And that's what slowed down the process <laughs> even more, but. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that it's unimaginable to us. I mean, we I was born, but I didn't I have no recollection of or, it. Yeah. yeah, no memory of it. But the more times I look at it and every year I always you know, either this year I watched the documentary as you said, and that brought new light to me, new information yeah. that I didn't know about. Yeah. And you see the whole city after that just come together. Yeah. Like it's a, it, it changed everything. But at the same time, like we talked about earlier, you have to see, you have to find a positive, even with uh, such destruction and such hateful yeah. terrorism that people came together, came together and yeah. reached out for like the, there were testimonies of people saying, and I've heard other people, uh, on podcasts and, and and such say the city felt a lot kinder that the weeks and months after, after that because of what happened and everybody was more um generous and empathetic because 
they 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 might have known somebody that lost their lives. I think a lot of people did, and and so when you when you experience that and you're kind about it, even though something terrible happened, but you you still have to move on and move yeah. forward, and it showed the resilience of that city and it made it what it is today. Like the people of New York, it's, it's, it's regarded as, it's regarded as, I mean, Casey nice that of yeah. course, you know, it's his fav- favorite city because of the people. Yeah. Because of that, they all come together, you know, even though there's 8 million people jam packed yeah. in one in city, city. Yeah. you know, they're all there for each other yeah. and you could feel it, you know, it's, uh, it's 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 a different experience but at the same time you need to have that connection with people if you're yeah. just in your own lane in your own zone and and you don't um empathize with others that you don't care about others yeah it, it's not going to be a good time for you yeah yeah, yeah no absolutely mm-hmm. man now i want to go to new york, <laughs> new york. <laughs> yeah yeah speaking of casey nice that though like i've I think I fell in love with New York because of him. Of him, yeah, yeah. Because of his daily vlogs, every every day he would post vlogs, bro. I remember watching that, and I think I didn't watch. I started watching it after he had about a million subscribers. I think. Oh wow. That's when I started. So like 2015, 2016, late twenty fifteen, early yeah. twenty sixteen, I started watching it, and. Ever since then, I'd I'd fucking watch it every day, and that's what I think that led me to, uh, to enjoy content creation because he was one of the first people to show that a a person like he's just one guy yeah. doing uh, a vlog and creating it, editing it, doing yeah. all this stuff, and he's showing this experience. He's telling stories. He's a filmmaker of sorts. Every day he creates like this mini movie yeah and it's uh it's incredible how many i think he's done five or six hundred or i don't know i don't know the exact number but over the span of three years i think Mm -hmm. three or four years that's at least a hundred you know probably way more than that but yeah so many vlogs and stuff that inspired other creators to get started do their own vlogs or whatever and just the experience you had, like you, you, every time you watched his videos, you were part of that experience. experience you yeah. know, he had those, um, shots of New York, like time lapses and drone yeah. shots and everything yeah. that went around. He was on his boosted board and yeah. all this stuff. It's, uh, it, it was something special. And, and, you know, I still some, sometimes not, every, not a lot, but sometimes I go back and rewatch a few just yeah. to appreciate like the, the, time and the craft that he put in to yeah to make that it's it's unbelievable yeah it's really cool i've seen some of those videos Mm -hmm. and like though he does it it i did i wasn't really big on like watching his stuff before because i didn't really know who Mm -hmm. he was um yeah i don't even know how i got introduced to it i have no idea but like i started watching some of his like content it was good Mm -hmm. yeah it's really creative dude yeah and he stopped posting i think a f- few years back like mm-hmm. he just was tired i mean i i wouldn't blame him because he really made a mini movie every every day i believe i I, don't, I forget if he did it on weekends he might have done it only on weekdays but maybe he did it on weekends too uh-huh. but to do that and be that consistent like every day it, yeah. the, he would record and edit and the next video would be out the next day you know yeah so I wouldn't blame him for stopping and needing a break. And yeah. so now he's yeah, he's just having fun with his family. You know, yeah. he's he's probably still makes uh, money from the videos cuz yeah. every single video over a million views. Yeah. Every single vlog over Everyone's a million still views. Watching them. Yeah. yeah. Cuz he put his heart and soul into it. That's what happens when you create something from like that place inside when you're passionate about it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you're passionate about it and He's he's been a a filmmaker for a long time. Uh-huh. Um, he did he, he sh- shot short videos throughout his life. Yeah. But this was a time where he wanted to create like a, a movie every single day, and he did it. Like he he made 
people fall in love with that kind of style. Yeah. And a lot of people try to emulate it now. They get they became inspired by his style. Gotcha. On how yeah. to, how to do it. And yeah. it's, it's crazy how those creators we need people like that that take the risk, you know, even though for I think he said um he didn't monetize his channel until he had I think either a million views or a hundred million views somewhere around there. Oh, like wow. he, he, like he just did it because he wanted to he do wanted it. To. There was no like, am I going to be profitable? Off a lot this, of yeah. people that start businesses and stuff, they, they try to do things because they want to make money. Yeah. And of course you want to make money, but I think the true art form, the mm -hmm. true expression of a human being doesn't come off if you're if that's your main focus is profitability yeah it has to be of what what's the idea that's being shown to me like what's the idea in my mind that i want to get out into the world yeah that has to come through first and when that does come through everybody just starts watching it because yeah. it's so authentic it's so you like nobody yeah. else is doing it yeah why because you had the idea you weren't doing it because um, for the for the money mm -hmm. first off and the money came for him like it uh, it he, now he's he's able to live life how he wants to how live he wants to with his family yeah with his family yeah. and he he did things that he enjoyed yeah to to do that and that i think that's the goal of everyone is to find that in this time you know the 21st century is i believe this the era where people are gonna be allowed the freedom i mean they still they are allowed the freedom right now but they're going to get the courage to go after their dreams their passions yeah whatever ambition they have because for a long time thousands of years yeah you had to just do whatever was whatever your parents did or whatever, whatever yeah. the environment provided yeah you had to be a farmer if you lived on a farm you had yeah. to do th these certain tasks because that's what's there and there's you pretty much like an outline of what you were supposed to do yeah what you like yeah it had to be that way there was no uh you couldn't travel you couldn't be shown different ideas through the internet and see what other people were doing yeah and i think that's the biggest thing is that in in our era is we get to see people live those the lifestyle that we want to live mm -hmm. right or we might not want to live it exactly like that but we become inspired yeah. by seeing certain things seeing uh people make videos seeing yeah. people be being a chef mm -hmm. writing a book i want to write a book and you start doing yeah. that and it's there's so many possibilities that yeah. i think now in this this century it's going to become intense like it's going to yeah. be everybody around the world is going to pursue their passions yeah and it's starting. It's starting, and it has started. And yeah, I think it's already started. Mm -hmm. I think it also does give a lot of people flexibility of what they choose to do. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I feel like I see it a lot, especially within our age group, right? Like, yeah. People just sometimes people just don't know what they want to do, right? Like they don't know what their interests are. What the indecision of it? Yeah, right. Um, it's like, oh, I don't like this. Oh, I don't like this. Right? Like there's a lot of options that mm -hmm. you can choose from. You're not, you're not, you're not required to narrow it down to a specific field. Like, mm -hmm. and this one of the, like I said, this one of the first times where that's possible. Yeah. You know, where you, and not liking something is actually good. So that's how I think of it is because you found out what you don't like, you're closer to what you do like. Mm -hmm. Cause if you just don't try anything and you expect uh you know whatever you like to come to you it's, it's not, not going to come cuz it comes through experiences yeah you trying something you know if i didn't start this podcast who would have known that i i enjoyed it i like listening to it i like watching it yeah i i mean that's why i had the the desire to actually pursue this yeah but it took courage it took me getting out of my own way yeah. to pursue it like i what are people gonna think fuck what people think go and do it because yeah. that's what i had to do like yeah. I, I didn't 
I, I got to a point where there I was if I didn't do this, I would yeah. regret it for the rest of my life. Yeah, yeah and absolutely. I, I wasn't going to live with that regret. Like, no way. Yeah. I have to do it. And it's probably one of the best decisions I've ever made. That's good. That's on, that's good to hear, dude. Like yeah. that, You go into trying something different. Like I feel like that's where most people don't try new things because they got to step out of their comfort zone to try new things, see whether they like it or not. Mm-hmm. And but that's the growth. Yeah, that's the growth part. Yeah, that's the growth. Uh, yes theory. You, you, do you know Yes Theory, the YouTube channel? I don't. Uh, it it's just a group of of guys and and they travel around the world and mm-hmm. their main motto and actually their their clothing line is seek discomfort. Okay. And I I oh wait I've yeah, seen yeah yeah, yeah I so think I've seen that yeah they make videos and stuff but I think that's true for everybody is don't just live life and comfort because it's the easiest thing easiest to do. option yeah i mean there's so much uh reward out there for you if you take just a little bit of risk i'm not saying you know risk it all yeah risk everything put all your money in and in, in, in stocks or whatever like whatever yeah. that risk may be to you but do it because it makes you more alive yeah you know there's something about pursuing that desire i know everybody has it every single human being has some kind of desire yeah. to pursue in their life that makes them feel good. Just yeah. thinking about it, you feel good about it. Yeah. And whenever the, the pursuit of that is the fulfillment of who you really are. Yeah. And when you get to experience that, you will understand what life is really about. And yeah. some people, I mean, there's there's quotes about you know, pe- some people go their whole life without living a single day. And it's true. Like it's most That's people crazy. and Henry David Thoreau, there's a famous quote. He said, most men live their lives in quiet desperation. So they don't get to experience their true self. They're, they're too congested with other people's opinions on mm-hmm. how life should be and what society's opinions are and what mm-hmm. their parents' opinions are and everything that shuts them down from who they really are. They're trying to pursue this desire of theirs, but mm-hmm. they're too focused on why it can't be done. Yeah. And as soon as you let go of that, let go of that illusion, because that's all it is. It's yeah. fear is an illusion. Mm-hmm. Um, stressful thinking is an illusion. I mean, I've, I recently learned that, like, why worry you know there's there's a great speaker wayne dyer i don't know if you've heard of him i haven't yeah uh i've talked about him on the podcast a few times but he he inst- or he instilled an idea uh-huh. i heard in one of his his videos and he said there is no worry in the universe there is no stress in the universe mm-hmm. there's only stressful thinking and i thought about that i was like yeah there isn't yeah. There isn't worry. There isn't, it, you know, it's just my thinking that's creating the worry. Yeah. And as soon as, and this is like a lot about mental uh, mental health and just understanding the mind in general. Yeah. You will understand that you have a choice to to make when you you could either pick the stressful thought or you could decide on allowing whatever happens to happen. Yeah. You know, it's it's sometimes it's just out of your control Mm -hmm. and there's no point in worrying over it, uh, ruining your day because of it. Yeah. It's just going to happen. And these little ideas uh, make a big impact Mm -hmm. if you just learn about it. Like it's I've gotten a lot deeper over the pandemic and shit because I had time and I was I was listening to these great speakers. Yeah. It's interesting to to learn more about this stuff because it it speaks to your soul Soul, really that that these that you could go after your passions to go after who you really are yeah because that's really in my opinion that's what we're here for is to live that true self whatever it may be everybody's different yeah you know for me I, i like doing podcasts but somebody else might love fitness yeah there's no need for me to or there's no 
lack of abundance. Mm-hmm. So that if I do something and do it at a high level, mm-hmm. um, it doesn't take away from anybody else. Yeah. Right. Wayne Dyer put it beautifully. He said, you could think of this universe as the ocean, yeah. like the ocean of abundance. And you could either take an eye drop, mm-hmm. an eye drop and take a few drops from the ocean of abundance, or you could take a 10 thousand gallon truck Mm -hmm. and do it and it won't matter it won't matter every single person has the opportunity to do whatever it is they want and it doesn't take away from anybody else yeah you're not going to take away from the the, your neighbor or your friend or uh, someone living halfway around the world it doesn't make any difference it's 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 life's unfolding of itself yeah you know kind of went deep on that yeah Yeah. i mean it's interesting stuff I think this last year, um, I I don't think I've really read as much as I wish I did. Mm-hmm. I read a couple of books, but I mean, it, I feel like the more you, you listen, to read more. yeah, like the the more you read, the more you listen to the podcast, the more you listen to just like overall stuff. The like knowledge. you just yeah, the knowledge you get is it, it's only helping yourself, right? Yeah. Especially when you go into it with an open mindset and. It's only there for your own self development, mm-hmm. right? The it, increase of perspective. Exactly, right? Last thing you want to be is narrow minded, where mm-hmm. it's like when someone's talking about something, it's like, oh shit, I can't relate. Like, yeah. you know, even if you don't agree with it, just, you know, listen to ha- it. For listening what it to it and having an open mind about it. Like, yeah. okay, like this is where he's coming from. Mm-hmm. This is where they're coming from, right? Um, yeah, you don't have to agree with everything someone else says, but just listening listen. and having that open mindset is, I think, what. A lot of people, I don't know, and I feel like that's something a lot of people it's, could work on, yeah, right? Um, yeah. It's. I think it's sometimes it's ignorance and the fact that they don't know that that can be done. Yeah. Where they've just been so accustomed to, if I disagree with someone, like fuck that person, you know. But instead, if you gain the knowledge, you could understand. If I don't, if I do disagree, then I could accept that idea for what it is. Yeah agree to disagree right like yeah. that's that's what that is yeah exactly right like i feel like you, we, we're growing up in such a society where like if you don't vibe with someone it's like ah f it like i don't need to vibe with, like i can you do your thing i'll do my thing mm-hmm. like i i don't like the way you think i don't like whatever yeah we have two different com- we have like two different mindsets like you do your thing i'll do my thing but that's not i don't think that's like the right attitude right like you should mm-hmm whatever you're gonna say i'll hear you out whatever i'm gonna say you hear me out yeah and we'll, understand each other you don't have to agree with it but at least just maybe you can learn something from it mm-hmm. yeah right? at the end of the day it's all just the learning experience yeah that you get to to live this life you know you're only here for so long exactly right the humans only live you know it's around a hundred ish years because yeah. of modern medicine now yeah it's gone to that point but I think, I mean, there's always, there's that famous quote, right? The, uh, you'll, you live two lives. One, uh, the, the other one starts when you understand that you only have one. Interesting. Yeah. So, I, and I, I learned that a few years ago that shit, I'm going to die. <laughs> like, yeah. you know, you, you, you see other people and, that you know that death is a real thing growing yeah. up as a kid you know that yeah. people die but you come to a realization that it's all going to end and there is a, a sense of urgency i guess to to make this life that right now that i'm living in this body yeah. as live it as best as i possibly as can. can yeah you know there's no wh- why you know, experience everything, but I'm going to try my hardest to live how I want to live. Yeah. Right. And it's, it's a special time. I think this is the best time to be alive as a human being. Yeah. There is, even with all the problems, I, there's so much no good evidence. Co- like there's yeah, a there, lot of good out there. Like. Yeah. There's no evidence that it's not the best time. You know, yeah. it's so much creativity, so much, uh, innovation and people coming together yeah interacting like me doing this a hundred yeah. years ago wouldn't be possible like yeah. th- 
just me just like being able to talk and like have this setup we're not i'm not bought by cbs or yeah i don't have to talk to any agents or yeah. managers or anything i'm just doing this because i want to As, and fun, i get yeah. i have the freedom to do that yeah and it's incredible yeah I, i'm forever grateful that i live in this time where it's possible to do that yeah to go and live how i want to live it's crazy yeah. Right on. I yeah. like the setup. This is this is pretty sick. Yeah, I love yeah. It. Let me go check again. See if this okay. works. Uh, okay, it's full again. But I <laughs> think okay. Uh, okay. Can you check if that one's working? Yeah. Let's see if this is still going. It's still going. Okay. Yeah. Good. At least we'll have that one. I guess. See, we're at like two hours already. So. Okay. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll wrap this up. Uh, there's, I have like 20% left on my laptop too. So, uh, for those watching, s some parts of this might be, uh, you know, might be not filled, and I'll just have this one going. But fuck it, <laughs> whatever, <laughs> whatever. As long as you could hear his voice, it's fine. I think. Yeah. yeah. But this was fun, man. Yeah, I, I really fun. enjoyed it. I mean, yeah. I, two hours went by. Like I didn't even feel yeah. like two hours. Like yeah. I told you, and in the beginning, I, I told him like, even if you're nervous, just understand this. Like once we start, you're gonna be so in the moment. Time's it gonna just fly goes, by. Yeah, it yeah. just flies by. Yeah. So this was really fun. Um, yeah. And I'm glad we got to do it. Take yeah, the time. Yeah, me too. And, it was fun doing this. Yeah, yeah. And hopefully you guys enjoyed it as well. So um, yeah, I'm gonna wrap it up here. Much love to everybody. Love to the world and peace. Peace out.